Hey everyone, how are you? How is everyone? Hope you are doing fantastic today. Making sure now let me bring some of that music down a little bit. Uh, but I want to say to all of you, thank you very much for tuning in Saturday night. This is what today's date is the 23rd March. And I want to say thank you to those who are watching. Uh, I'd say a squad, but that was for my good friend captain um who is um he actually say hello and i think they it disappeared the, the in the chat i think that was yesterday i'm not sure but everyone thank you very much sorry that i did not get the chance to do this live stream la last night or yesterday and it's because um i wasn't feeling great i've been dealing of course it's the time of the year when there's a lot of sinuses and I wasn't feeling that good. I'll tell you that. And that's actually because yesterday uh, at work, we did, uh, of course, you know, it's the time of the year. I suffer from sinuses, a lot of allergies. And this time of the year, uh, the company actually did um, one of those uh, team building things where, you know, events were part, half of the company really went to um, do a, technically it was uh, an activity that we do yearly. And this year around, this year we did, um, um, uh, it was that uh, I think we were chasing, hunting, you know, like clues and stuff like that. We did an event in a local area, a local park, a national park. And it, it was fun. It actually was fun, but it was a bit, it was drizzling. It was a little cloudy. It was rain. And of course, we were in the elements a little bit here and there. It got a little wet. And when I came home, because it actually was an early day after that, we were able to go home. When I came home, I was tired. So I took a shower, went, you know, ate. You know, lunch, lunch at work that was paid for at lunch uh, for for all the employees. Came home, which was great to be able to come home early on Sat on Friday. Uh, took a shower, took a nap, watched some TV. Took a, you know, took a shower, took a nap. And when I wake up, my eyes were so swollen. This particular, this one was all red, and it looked so terrible. And I wasn't feeling good. I took some allergy medication before I went to sleep, so I was completely sewn out. So I didn't get the chance to to do the video. So at last minute, I say, you know what? I cannot do this with the eyes all red. <laughs> but in any case, I want to say thank you very much. I know that sometimes we get more viewers on Friday than Saturday. Um, but definitely, there's a lot to talk about um, this week. But I want to say thank you very much for your support. It's been a busy week in the collectibles world. A lot of things have been happening. And I want to really cover as much as I can. I talk about those collectibles that everyone is interested on. Uh, but thank you very much. I ask you, please, if you're watching this, uh, just leave a comment. Let me know you're watching. 
Uh, also, leave a like. Uh, if you're watching this for the first time, you like the contents of the channel, follow me, please. Follow me here on this channel. But you can also follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. The links are in the description. And let me know that you're watching um, and share with me. We, we can interact. I love to interact with everyone, with my viewers more than anything else. That's one of the reasons perhaps I don't get as many invites or people to hear or check guests because I like to talk to you. You know, it's great to talk to all the guests and maybe we need to do uh, some of that at some point. But I like to talk to you because at the end of the day, you're the one who sustained this channel. Um, and I appreciate that you are here and I want to hear your opinion. Um, we can talk about a lot of things. But tonight, I want to cover a couple of things just to give you an idea of what we are going to cover. I want to talk about Mesco. Mesco um, definitely has a couple re uh, reveals uh, this week, a couple of pre-orders. I want to cover some of them. I want to uh, look at 3.0. I want to talk about X06 for fans of Star Trek figures. We're going to look at that. Hot Toys also had a Battlefront 2 uh, Trooper figure that came out really nice. From um, We're going to look at that today. It went out like this. The pre-order went on the wait list right away. I want to cover some of the new pre-orders from Diamond Select Toys, Gentle Giant. I want to talk about Royal Selangor that actually has some new pre-orders this weekend. Uh, also, Regal Robot has another pre-order this week. We're going to look at that. Star Ace Toys, Extra Exva. Uh, we're going to talk about so Zodiaco Studio. Uh, we're going to talk about Weta Workshop. Um, uh, we're going to look at Iron Studios. They also had some good reveals this week. Uh, this week. Infinity Studio, Way Studio, Prime One Studio, Saisha Collectible. Definitely we're gonna cover a lot of Saisha today. There's two big pre-orders that happened this week, and a lot of people are excited for it. And we're gonna look at that Batman versus the Joker Eternal Enemies PF that went on pre-order over the weekend, last weekend. But uh, you know, it's it's a really uh, there's a lot to talk about that one. Last week we covered a little bit of that teaser, but now that it's on pre-order, we have better pictures. We're gonna look at it. Uh, that fastball special that finally went on pre-order this week. We're gonna look at it today. We're gonna look at PCS, the stuff that went on pre-order this week, and finally we're gonna look at Quinn Studios with that big Hulk one-third scale statue uh, out of silicone. All of that, the, all of that fullness. We're gonna look at it. The price. We're gonna talk about all of those things. But uh, I want to say again, thank you very much for being here in the channel. That uh, let me know that you're watching. So let's get into it. And the first thing I want to do, uh, of course, as always, uh, we go into the figures. And let me kind of have an idea here. We're gonna look at um, figures, and for that reason, actually, I want to come to uh, Big Bad Toy Store. Let me take you there. And here in Big Bad Toy Store, I want to start with Mesco. And the first company that I want to cover is uh, we talk about uh, Mesco Toys, of course, here at Big Bad Toy Store. This company has a new Ghost Rider 112. This is part of the 112 collection. Um, for those who already know, uh, the 112 collection, uh, these are like figures within pretty much like seven inch, six, seven inch. Uh, that's the reason there's a 112, there's a 12 scale. Uh, they have this Marvel Ghost Rider and Hell Cycle Vengeance Edition. This is actually a Big Bad Toy Story exclusive set. This already a regular set that is already on sale. That went on pre-order last year. It's already on sale. They also have it here. But this is a, a repaint with a more classic look, more of a Johnny Blaze look. And uh, it's two hundred fifty dollars, which I'm a little bit on the edge about the price. I think it's too expensive for what it is. But uh, one thing I could say about a lot of the uh, Mesco 112, they tend to be very expensive. So let's look at this picture here. Uh, of course, he has the classic look. If you have seen you know, the Ghost Rider stories, the original stories, he had more of a black finish. It was a more regular motorcycle. Uh, it was a regular silver motorcycle. It was just everything more basic. But as the comic book went along, it then it started developing that the more bright blue suit kind of color and you know they only has the red motorcycle so they went for that this time around and uh, i would say i like it more than the and i'm gonna show you in a moment the the, the regular that came first and um the it's all painted what they did actually with this motorcycle with this um this chopper they technically used the same chopper that they did before they did some changes on it but it's, re it's a repaint of that chopper with some changes on this sculpt to make it look more, you know, older chopper. I will tell you, I, I would have preferred for them to do a more um, classic look and then the more modern chopper. If they're going for the retro look, they could have just given a more retro look to the motorcycle as well. The only thing that they really did was to repaint the motorcycle. 
it still looks cool i would say uh it's not bad uh, you know my only uh, i would say the grief that i have with the 112 again is the price point i think they're too expensive i think that for that price for this scale i'd rather go with that you know with marvel legends and i think I, i'm well served with marvel legends uh but you know yeah you know you know the thing that you know a lot of these figures of the 112 is that of course they come with just a lot extra a lot of extras and of course they got the mixed media and all of that but um it has a nice chain got nice effects all of that so it comes with all the extras it's more possible um it, it looks good in my opinion uh, again this is only exclusive to big bad toy stores so it's not gonna be there are gonna be many available per se and here you see the hell cycle features also has a light off function yeah, so removable flames and sound features, which are a lot of extras, and perhaps is the reason they decide to keep up with the more the, the chassis of the motorcycle to be a little more, you know, chunkier, and of course, so they can have all those features, you know, the light of features, the sound features, all of that, which I, I can be without. I don't really need sound features for something like this. Uh, here you can see the extra hands as a base. The the suit, of course, mixed media. It's not bad. And here's the chopper definitely again it's a modern chopper repainted make it look more old style but definitely is new so you know it's it's all right i guess now if i give you an idea here you can see on this is the the the, the stat it's only 7.48 inches tall so it's when the seven inch uh, even closer more it's a little bigger perhaps than marvel legends or uh, marvel you know a little larger than the what i would say the yeah the marvel uh, legends are closer to the marvel select figures now if you look at let's say to ghost rider figures here just to give you an idea here on the ghost rider of course this is the one 250 this is the regular one this is the one that's also for sale already this is the original and of course this is more of a you know like danny catch style you know if you can call it that is more modern more 90s per se although the motorcycle is not 90s it's definitely a little more modern than that but this is the original that came out uh, as you can see the all they did was to repaint the motorcycle and of course the colors and the on the on the suit of course on the tailoring all of that is a little bit different but it's actually the same motorcycle which is a difference there still i always found this particular one very expensive uh 240 i still think that it's a little too too much to ask for it it shouldn't be less than that and here you can see right back there like <laughs> cool beans you can see blade it's cool it has the same functions some of these figures i like not necessarily a fan of that wolverine i definitely not but they're all the features you know at the end I, you know it, it looks cool at the end it's just who you want to choose to this is ten dollars cheaper available already if you want the other one of course it's a pre-order i think they would have gone for something a little bit better in my opinion they would have gone for like the marvel legends retro collection that is i think i love this collection they're very small figures three point and three and a three quarter and this is actually what they did for that it has the of course the the the, the motorcycle which is a bit older style chopper and i think that's would have been something better a redesign instead of a repaint on the same chopper that they use for the the other one i like this one this is a really nice collection a, you know the kenner collection you can call it that the retro style with all this new look i even like the packaging too and uh, it's pretty cool so i think that and this is only 24 bucks you know <laughs> and that's the smaller of course a lot smaller but i think i like that even the design of the motorcycle a little bit better than the one they did here so yeah i would say it's fine uh, definitely um in this case mesco the 112 you know still producing stuff you know i've never really been into it too much but it, it was kind of caught my eye you know of course the design because i love retro stuff and i definitely love the retro look of um uh, the ghost rider so this is what we're gonna talk about it uh we're gonna come back uh at mesco later uh in the video we're gonna look at uh talk about the new statue the conan statue that they released but when you start talking about statues all right, so I want to move now, and I want to take you to SciShow Collectibles very quick. Let's go there, because I want to take you... Let's talk about 3-0. And here are all the releases that happened this week. You're going to cover a lot of these pieces today. Definitely, they did a lot of great things. Uh, I want to cover this one right here. This is... You're a fan of Chainsaw Man. Uh, this uh, anime, based on the manga, of course, you get Aki... Hayakawa. I'm not necessarily a big fan of Chainsaw Man. I know there's a big fan base out there. 
$150. Again, this is something that 3-0 really does well. Hey, what's up, Batman? How are you, my friend? Thank you. Thank you for coming for a little bit. I appreciate it. Always, always a nice to have you. I know that you're always busy, but um, I hope you're doing good and the family is doing great. But here you can see this guy, uh, this figure. Uh, again, uh, Fix Zero, in this case, the three zero stuff they do, they do fantastic. I think the price point, $150. Uh, to me, this is what you should price things. Uh, I think it's the perfect price for this type of figures. That's the reason why I sometimes don't understand uh, Mesco pricing and 250 for, you know, yeah, you got the motorcycle. But I think this, of course, these are bigger. This is one six, and they come with a lot of accessories. Uh, you know, it, the guy looks great. The sculpt is really nice. This even tailoring, you can remove his jacket on his suit. Comes with the extra hands, nice katana, nice cup in the hand. Uh, you know, I think this is great overall. Very nice. Yeah, this is, I think, and this, again, this is what I like. Uh, the, even the cigarette in his hand, you know, that's kind of cool. But this is what I can say about this company and what they do. Uh, I, I think this is something that I think the price, if everything was around this price point, it would be great. Now, one thing that I have in the past, have suffered in the past with uh, with 3.0 is that the body, you know, in this case, they still use the old style body mold. So the body, you know, bucks, if you can call it that, I think that's, you know, most people call it nowadays, which is funny, but this body that they use uh, are, you know, very old fashioned and they always, they have, they can break. You know, as my experience been over the years, so they're not the greatest. But overall, the overall package, besides the body, is the, everything, the sculpt and the portraits, the hands, all the accessories, the tailoring that they do with these figures, really make it look more premium than what they really are in the end. And I like that. You know, I think that they did a really nice job with this figure. Uh, definitely always liking what 3-0 does. So if you're kind of building this collection, let's see if we can look at some of the figures that they've been doing here. Let me see if we can look at 3-0. And look at some of the stuff they do. Of course, we have talked about this company in several locations. Looking at this stuff here. Let's see. Chainsaw Man. Some of the figures have already been released. Here are the other figures that have been released. They're also on pre-order, as you can see. There's two already on the wait list. You had Makima as well. So this is another one, just to give you an idea here. This is definitely a really nice collection. Very, very cool. Definitely nice tailoring, nice body, you know, the, the types that they use for the, the figure. Even that one, I like the body type they use for this. It looks very, like, the female body is really well done. So, it, it really good. Actually, sometimes, I, some, I would say that the body that they use for her, as you can see, the silhouette in her body, it's even better than sometimes when you see the body type in, in some of those hot toy figures. Uh, so, I would say that 3 Zero is, is really killing it with this one. Hey, what's up, Eddie? How you doing, my friend? Good evening, too, to you. I hope you're doing well on the family too. So I would say 3-0. Uh, pay attention to this figure. If you're a fan of Chainsaw Man, uh, you can see this figure. We can look at this other, this other one right here, other character that's already on the wait list. So they're really selling well, as you can see. They're really doing well. Well, all the extra parts. Again, 3 Zero really doing really, really well. So, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. You know, and I'm a big, I'm not a big Chainsaw, you know, man fan. I, I really don't care much about it. Um, but, you know, I, I when I saw these figures, I was like, okay, these are cool. Oh, I look at the way, you know, like the, the portraits are interchangeable using the same type of hair. So, yeah, it gives you some value. I think for $150, you are getting, you're more than, more than well served with what they're doing. So, kudos to 3 Zero for keep doing what they're doing all right my friends so i want to take you now we're going to go to exo6 we're moving up to the next company and exo6 release a row latin um ensign row this is a character from the next generation if you're really a fan of uh, and also she's been actually in picard i've been actually lately been watching picard um on on paramount plus having fun with it um here you can see the pre-orders i think they did a fantastic job with this one here you can see ensign roll aaron ensign row that's actually what you can call it some people call it roll aaron you know there's different a row just like that row looks really great 
if you purchase through X06, which I do recommend, uh, it's cheaper if you're in the US. It's 195 plus the shipping. Uh, the you gotta pay an, an amount of what twenty dollars or so so for the, the deposit, and uh, it's a flat rate international shipping per figure. Uh, they always have I think they it's like twenty five dollars in the U.S. or so. Um, it's not bad I think. Um, I think you get a little bit cheaper, and they of course again they're now doing it. Um, they also you know ship it internationally that's the rate right there i think it's free delivery in the us if i'm not mistaken but in any case here you can see everything that comes with this figure we're gonna see if we are able to look at the photos which is something that i dislike the way it's set up here but i can take you actually to scishow because again scishow has a much better fi uh, picture sy uh, system i like the way the pictures are at scishow you're not going to get any different if you order directly through them or to someone else um you're still gonna get the same piece. That's one thing I would say. They don't have like a special or like an exclusive to the website. Uh, they haven't really done that. So you get the same thing whether, whether you order here or there. Uh, the only difference of course is always going to be that you will pay more if you order somewhere else. You know, you, like here's $200 versus 195 you ordered through uh, the website. But the pictures here are the same. Here you can see, I think the portrait with the actress is really good. It comes with the extra accessories, the extra weapons, the tablets, the hands. You know, it doesn't really have like that many crazy accessories. The 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 suit looks great. The tailoring is fine. Yeah, definitely. I, I like the look that they chose. Actually, she always had in the show that more serious like face all the time. So she was a they were a very unique character in, in herself. Very very brave and proud and all that so i think that they chose the best portrait for her here you can see with data right there in the background hey i want to know uh how the quality of the bodies are the quality uh and you mean on the um which one hey travis how are you my friend uh the quality of the um of the three zero or the quality of uh x06 I would say the quantity of, uh, if if I kind of give you an idea, X06, I think the bodies are okay, but they still use the old style molds that were used back in the day. They still use the same type of molds or the same type of body parts that you can get. Um, I do have a few of them, you know, and I will tell you the figures are look great, but when you actually take the body parts, they're still using the molds that, you know, they're like very cheaply made in China versus x06 they actually they design and the bodies just for the character to resemble the character body type and they go the extra mile to actually create one body for pretty much just the character uh, and i think in quality if you compare three zero quality with you know in this case with what they're doing here uh i uh x06 definitely x06 has better body types so that's the reason you pay more versus the other one in the end it's just a matter of you know I think one company is more premium than the others, you know, than the other, like Hot Toys does have premium body types, but they, uh, sometimes, you know, they also have their issues like everyone else. Exo six. Oh no. Exo six creates great body types. I'll tell you that. I, I love what they do. I have seven, uh, 709 and I will tell you that figure looks amazing. looks great on display. The body was especially designed for the character. It looks really, really good. Although I was, um, uh, Nanjin, the owner of the company was saying in, in, in on Facebook that they are trying to minimize some of the costs because some of these figures really come so expensive for him. He does this more for the love of it. He's not really making it for profit per se. He wants to create all the characters so they sometimes tried to re they he started rethinking his strategy about redoing some body types and trying to kind of match some of the body types so they don't have to recreate a new mold every single time so it's already considering those factors but you're trying to do it as positive as possible they, he doesn't want to repeat the, the what happened with 709 with 709 i think he pretty much he lost a lot of money he wanted to create the character um, he would always care about the, the actors and the characters, so he went as far as that. But he said that he's not going to make the same mistake again, because at the end of the day, he has to pay the bills. But um, that's the reason why 709, if you give the chance to get a 709, go for it, because that figure is amazing. But that doesn't mean all the figures that I've seen, they're just terrific. You know, they're great, great quality. So, yeah, I recommend you the, I recommend you to, if you want to get into X06, um, you will not be disappointed with the quality of the figures. Um, I, I really do like the stuff that he does um nanjin uh, the owner of the company so yeah this is a great figure again 
You can go through SciShow. Uh, you can go through any of that. Or if you can do it through X06, they also have now. They they can ship directly. Great company. I'm I'm you know always pleased with what you know what they do. I you know I have a good experience with them, talking to them, to the owner on social media. So I think uh, you definitely will not be disappointed with them. All right, my friends. So we're moving on now to the next company, and that uh, we are right here at SciShow, of course. I want to talk about the next reveal, which is this one that to me, like as soon as he went on pre-order, I knew, like everybody knew they weren't talking about it. They knew that this will pretty much go, you know, sell right away, and it did. It's on the wait list. It went on the pre-order, if I'm not mistaken, that was Friday, like at one o'clock. And in a matter of few minutes, it was completely sold out. Now, just to tap perspective, this is a very, this is an exclusive for Hot Toys. And Hot Toys, uh, they said that they will only produce like 1,500 of these worldwide. And of course, the priority was to China and all the distributors over there. SciShow is the distributor in North America and other parts of the world. So they will have an allotment. So it was, it was known that it will sell out, you know, because, you know, 1,500 pieces of uh, art, you know, in this case, a Stormtrooper. They sell really quick, and of course, you know, worldwide, people are going to just, you know, cram the website, and everybody just took the pre-order, and unfortunately, yeah, right now, if you go to eBay, you're going to find a lot of people trying to sell this for, like, crazy money. Now, this is a great design. I'm a big fan of Battlefront 2. I play that a lot. If you watch my, uh, if you follow my, my main well, no, my main, my gaming channel, you'll know that I, I play Battlefront 2 there. I talk about Battlefront when I can, and I always love Battlefront 2. I have played Battlefront 2 several times. I review it, on, you know, also. And um, this is one of my favorite skins when I play as a Stormtrooper. And, well, like one of those troopers, you know, the clone troopers, I'm sorry. So I think it's great. Um, it was around 200 and some dollars. It wasn't that expensive. But it's a great, great, great design. I really want that Shram figure. Yeah, Eddie, go for it. Uh, you're going to like it. You're definitely going to like that figure. You're going to like it because I think Ex Exocet create great figures. And I love it. You know, I don't collect, Ex you know, like, it's, I, I love a Star Trek, but I don't collect all the figures. I collect, I grab the ones I like. And uh, I think Shram is a really nice. Now, Ro is really good. So here we can see this figure. Um... Look at the details. One thing about this figure, uh, you know, which now, of course, is sold out. You're going to have to find a way to get it somewhere else. But it's such a beautiful design. Of course, this is exclusive to the video game in the sense that it's one of those, the, you know, those suits that you can choose. Uh, I, one of my favorites to choose when I'm playing as one of the, again, one of the clone troopers. It comes with the extra portraits. Uh, so you have different helmets, which is great. The hands. This is one figure that looks will look it look great on display in my opinion. That color really matches the weapons. Very poseable as you can see. It doesn't have an unhelmeted portrait, which is eh, you can actually customize it if you like. But it looks so so good in my opinion. It's definitely one a collector item. And I really like this one. No, man, it comes with all the weapons. That is definitely one that, you know, I, even what was that Jada? What was that Jada? I forgot the name. This Jada, uh, they, one of the YouTubers that I, I, I follow him. He does a lot of hot toy stuff for Star Wars. He's a big Star Wars fan. He also does collectibles. Um, you know, he was talking about it on a video this week. I, I would, he was excited. I can see why. Uh, I was even thinking to myself, maybe I, I go for it. But, you know, I kind of missed the boat. On Friday, by the time I came to realize, I knew it would miss. They didn't, they, we didn't know when it was going on pre-order. So, but it hit on Friday. As soon as it hit on Friday, it was so it was so right away. But this is a really nice depiction. This is a nice trooper to have. You're into like collecting a lot of troopers. Some people wanted to have multiples because of the helmets. If you can afford that, maybe someone did. It was able to uh, pre-order three. But man, this looked great. Here you can see. Very nice. You can see the different portraits, the different styles that you can use also within the, within the game. Those are the choices that you can pick. And of course, the color skin is just the one that you use on your trooper. But the art trooper looks great, man. I'm telling you, this is a great... Uh, did I get this? No, unfortunately, no. I was, a, you know, again, I was... 
you know, came from, I was so tired when I came from work. I, I came around, I think probably around that time or something like that. When I got back from, from work, I was like around someone, something, uh, I was hungry. So I lunch, um, I brought my lunch. I didn't even stay to eat. I just grabbed my lunch and just left work. And I just came a lunch at home, watched some TV and I completely skipped my mind. I wasn't thinking about it. And then I think I took a nap or, or something, or I think I, I, I went and when I check out or something, when I was going on Facebook, when I was laying down in bed and I said that it was two people were complaining about that it was sold out and that was it. You know, I just fall asleep, took a medic medication and I fall asleep and I just don't remember it happens. You know, uh, it's still cool, man. I'm telling you, I like it. And hopefully there's a chance later down the road to grab it, which I doubt, but Hey, you never know. Somebody might, might get it. So it's on the wait list. It's really nice. I like it. I think again, it wasn't expensive when it went out. It was like 200 and some dollars. I think it was a fair price for it. 265 or something again, limited to 1500, which is not 1500. Keep in mind, not that size you're selling 1500 here. That's the total edition size. The allotment here is less 1500 is hot toys in general worldwide. And um, the priority was to the distributors in China. So let's, you know, you got to keep that in mind. I really like this limited chase figures. Uh, it makes the hobby fun. Yes, it does. But some people absolutely hate the lottery system. Yeah. Um, I saw someone posting something today. I think today I look in on the, uh, on the, I, I saw on Facebook, somebody complaining. Uh, I think at one of the, the sideshow groups talking about that, you know, that size should police you know the they have they stop people for doing that for the flipping all that and to be honest with you that's it's more i know people want to express their anger but the reality is that there's no way size can police what people do with the stuff they purchase it's something flipping has been in this hobby for a long time i remember size has always been in that situation uh where a lot of the stuff back in the day was worse when the statues um were even more limited when they only have like 300 or whatever or 250 for you know for a exclusive now they have in the thousands so i remember that they were sold out in a matter of minutes they crashed the whole website you know we're talking about 10 15 years ago and you know you couldn't get access to it and all of a sudden they're showing up people are selling it on ebay you know for double the price three times the price and of course people got infuriated but the reality is that once people do a transaction you know such you cannot do anything they're on the business to sell stuff you know they don't and not in the business to go after people that they're reselling stuff on the aftermarket because at the end of the day what people do with what they purchase that is on on the, them so it's kind of dumb to really think that SciShow can police what people do because at the end of the day SciShow is not even hot toys SciShow is only a distributor is a partner for hot toys and that end hot toys will be the one policing but you know hot toys cannot even police china in china what they do in china so they get a lot of counterfeit in china so the reality is that it sucks but just because people sell or try to sell something double the triple the price on ebay doesn't mean that it's sold that way you know, yeah, some people might buy the bullet, but believe me, if I cannot buy this, you know, that's it. I move on. If I say that it's $1,500 on eBay, I'm not going to pay $1,500 for that. Something that only costs $200. I'm not that stupid. You know, down the road, I might be able to get it, you know, someplace else for a lot less. You never know, but I'm not going to just lose sleep over it. It looks cool. Yet it sucks. But in reality, this is the way it is. You know, that's, you know, consumerism at its finest. That's capitalism at its finest. You got to be there at one o'clock, ready to get the money, ready just quit the thing, just to click in on it. You know, you got to make it a matter of seconds. You got to get good at it. You know, that's all it is. And, you know, some people get the chance. Some people don't. Um, I'm sure that some people were able to get it. They're happy. The people that waited and they were not prepared for it, that's on them. That's not on SciShow. That's definitely not on the collector that bought it. Even on the collector that was able to buy more than one or two. So, you know, and of course, you know, you get people that they had bots that are able to buy multiple ones. That's something that is a big problem. But SciShow doesn't have the power to really control what people do on the web. Unfortunately, we're, we live in a time where people do crazy stuff through AI, through bots to be able to purchase a lot of these things. So they're able to sell them or resell them online. The reselling part is something that has always been heated. It's always that is a part of this community, part of this hobby, and it's not going to go away. It's never been away. It's always been part of it. Just have to learn to deal with it and don't get too, you know, like I would tell the people like, don't get too excited. Don't get too sad, too mortified. Don't lose just the joy of in collecting things just because 
sometimes things don't go your way so okay so this is great love the design love the concept you know unfortunately uh, right there 265 that's the price i would see it now, which is not bad 265 is a great price for it so this is the last piece that i'm covering for uh you know action figures this is the last thing that we're going to cover we're going to move now into statues and uh, but i want to say to all of you uh thank you very much for you know always to be in part of this uh channel each one each person here again batman thank you very much for being here saying hello eddie thank you thank you my friend uh thank you everyone who is watching don't forget travis thank you very much for also stopping by anyone else um thank you don't forget to leave a like and to leave a comment let me know you're watching please subscribe to the channel you're here for the first time all right my friends it's time to move on and i want to move on to uh another um Let's see. We're going to go to another company. We're getting into now into the it's collectibles. And I want to cover. I'm not I don't have anyone in a specific to cover. So I want to talk about uh, Diamond Select Toys. Let me see if we can get there. And I want to talk about Gentle Giant. We're talking about Diamond Select Toys. They released this week some re, uh, pre-orders. So we're going to cover some of the stuff here, perhaps some of the stuff you can see here like this. I want to cover this. As you can see, this is the for the animated series, their double mini bus. If you're into mini bus, this is something new that they have. Uh, I will tell you, um, I like this animated series where they're doing the mini bus. Not necessarily a big fan of the way this was this was painted. Uh, I don't like the lines on the eyes. I think that is um, I don't remember being like that on the show. So that to me, oh, the way that it was painted, the way that did the line, it looks like the eyes are have a line in the middle when actually the lights are down here. So it seems like the eyes are too low and it gives you an effect that it like, he has like, like a very tiny little eyes and you don't see the other line. So I think it's just a matter of the way they painted it. Maybe they could have just paint the line a little lower the shadow so it would give him a little more of that red around that would be a much better thing on the paint job you know this is the thing about the cell shading sometimes it's a hit or miss sometimes i like it sometimes i don't sometimes they do it right sometimes it feels like it's overly done from this angle it looks a lot better it's fine not a bad one i do like this show for sure and now of course i just be uh, just watching this week i watched the episodes from uh, X-Men 97, really loving that, loving X-Men 97, hoping for maybe with this success of the show that we'll get an, uh, an extension also of the Spider-Man animated series, maybe. That would be great, a continuation of that series. I think it would be awesome, and I think people will be all for it because I think, um, for me, the X-Men show was fantastic, but also the the you know the, uh, the Spider-Man animated series was terrific. It was probably, sometimes I, I think, superior, in my opinion, because... I really love the shard log that they introduced so many of the characters that we know from the comics. I just wanted to buy a new trooper. I guess hot toys do want my money. <laughs> Don't want my money. Yeah, I get you. I get you. It's things like that happen. That's unfortunate. Uh, I don't know why they decided to go only for 1500. I don't know why they decided to do it as an exclusive. I honestly would have been great if they would produce more than that, but hey. What can we say? That's how toys doing this stuff. But here you can see. Not necessarily a fan of the neck, man. I feel like the neck is too short. He looked like, you know, he don't have a neck. And from some angles. That's my only concern. And definitely not necessarily a big fan of the way they did the paint job. Not necessarily also a big fan of the way they did the the effect of his baton and his hand. Not really a big fan. So it's all right. $90. I still find it very overpriced. Sometimes this figures end up at Walmart or something like that for a lot less. So I don't know if that's going to be the case here. But that was one. They had this other statue, which uh, Weapon Hulk uh, Premier Collectible. This is a, a more modern Hulk take. Not necessarily a big fan of this statue. Honestly, when I look at it, I look at it, you know, and I was like, man, that looks terrible. And, and I'm not trying to be in an offensive way. Maybe the artist just the artists are just doing what they're supposed to be doing. But even the paint job looks a little bit cheap. And and if it's a premiere at $250, I, I don't know. It just I even see the lines in it. Um 
it's a premier collection statue so if it's a premier that means that it's made out of uh the thousands are gonna be there i'm trying to see the materials here is that polished stone uh it looks more like it's been done by um they've been using the you know like pvc on it it doesn't really say much so the from right there it says i don't know 1000 pieces it was designed by nelson Asensio. Uh, sculpted by Jan, Jean St. Jean. And I love Jean St. Jean. I think he's a great sculptor, but I don't know. I don't know why it just, it just doesn't look that great to me. Here you can see Diamond Select Toys release has been the best of what he does. And what he does is smash, kidnap, and is permitted by the Weapon X program. Clayton Cortez was transformed into Weapon H with the size of a strength of the Hulk and the Adamantium Claws and Skeleton of Wolverine. Cortez is unstoppable hero. And this one's seven skill resin statue. Oh, it's a resin statue. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I feel that the paint job leaves a lot to be desired. Maybe that's what is causing it not to look as great, in my opinion. And to be honest, I don't have much appreciation for the guy or like, oh, man, I feel like in it's just the line. Sometimes even the lines are not well painted in his hair. Like you can see the line there. Of course, it's a prototype, but if the prototype is already looking like that. And then you can see the arm, the line of his arms being attached to it. There's not even cover properly cover. And this is something that the painter would have done. The painter would have done. I don't know who they chose to be the painter of this prototype, but whoever did it didn't really. I'm sorry. Maybe it's a, even a person who I know. I don't think it was like chosen to be the best. I don't know. It just it's just a lot of things that I feel that they, they there's a lot to be desired about this so yeah for 250 dollars i definitely this is gonna be this is not gonna in my opinion i don't think this is gonna sell at all i think they're gonna have a lot of stock for this one um so yeah sorry but not sorry on this one it doesn't look great at all now there is another thing that they did of course they're doing this bus and they got the marvel studios black widow black widow mini bus of course they keep doing this boss for the you know in this case for the avengers series it looks great uh the portrait of course off this is uh but the mini bus i think it does have the essence of scarlett johansson and definitely of the 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 black widow it looks good nice pose um she's doing the walk for sure her hair looks great the way that they did that it looks fine a little bit maybe gentle so you got to be careful on the packaging maybe it doesn't break those parts are very easily to break when they're not properly uh packaged because you can see the way the strands of the hair all of that that would be something that you got to be careful with but the paint job is is good on this one the portrait not bad at all for this collection definitely this uh, up there it's not bad $130 though, I find that a little bit too steep, but this is where this mini bus collection is going. That's the direction they've been going for a while with the pricing. Now, there's one more thing that I want to cover here while we're here. I want to talk about this one. There's other things here, but I'm not going to cover that, but I want to talk about this. This uh, this is uh, Legends 3D, which this is a half scale. This is John Wick Chapter 3. It looks pretty good. This John Wick looks nice. I'm looking at John Wick. This is uh, made out of resin. To be honest with you, if you want a, a bus, I'm not sure who would like to have a bus of John Wick. I would like to have John Wick as an action figure. I love it as a Hot Toys. Also, I like it. Uh, you, it's a statue more in an action doing, you know, doing something like firing a gun. That would be the, the one that I would like to see. But, you know, if you're into bus, they, they didn't do anything wrong with this one. I think the paint job, the way it's done, it, the, the facial expression, you definitely can see the actor. Keanu looks there. Even the beer is well painted. The painter did a really nice job in bringing that into this. It's a very simple suit, but it's well painted. I love the, the, the base. I love how they did the base and the coloration of that. It looks like a little bit of like marble, like black marble. Uh, so it looks great. And of course, here you can see the painted all that. It's a really nice, nice mini boss in 3D. Definitely, this collection continues to be very interesting the way they're doing it. Price point two hundred dollars, half scale. Really, it's not bad at all. I think they they really did a good job with this one. So, yeah, again, yeah, I love the base. Um, it's it's really good. I think they did a really nice job with this one. For two hundred dollars, you cannot go wrong. If I have two hundred dollars, I buy this rather than buying that. Hulk or that you know weapon h i will definitely this is the word the money should go for this one like this it really looks really good so now 
let's move now to Gentle Giant, which technically Gentle Giant again is the company is owned by Diamond Select Toys. They do a lot of their design. And they also have some of the stuff that we see here, but they also have other things that I want to cover here. As you can see, they designed they did John Wick. Definitely, they did a fantastic job. They designed the Spider-Man animators. They did all of them. We have to cover them, some of them. Now, I want to talk about the things that I did. They're not showing up on Diamond Select Toys, but they're also part that you will find at previews or whatever, and you can get from them. They have this St. Patrick's Day special, Tales of the Jedi. Uh, which I really love the show. Jaddle animated mini bus. Also, this is a character that you have seen in the comics. And it looks really good. The mini bus, $130. I found that she's tiny for $130. I think. And I think they did a nice job with this. She really looks good. The paint job is really well done. Of course, it's based on the animated series, on the 3D animation. So. You're not going to really miss much in the sense that, oh, you need to have like this. It really colors are just in some way kind of basic. Now, the only thing that I might say that I'm necessarily such a big fan of it, or I kind of understand why they did it. They put this little thing in the center to hold her bus, actually to elevate the bus. And I get it because she's a very small character like Joda. If you put it like a real scale in comparison to the other one, she will be so small and so short in comparison to the rest. You want to kind of bring it higher into the scale so uh it looks great on the display with the other bus so i think it's great it's nice i still don't think that the 130 dollars is justified for this one it's free shipping here it's nice it's a special that they have it's an exclusive you know for st patrick's i don't know where the connection may be because she's green or whatever but um it, it looks good now they also have boba fett from the book of boba fett this is another mini bus. $130 has become the standard for this collection for this for all the mini buses they sell. It's fine. I'm not necessarily a fan of the way he's looking down. I wish he was looking up or looking for instead of looking down. It's kind of like a weird pose. The paint job is excellent, in my opinion. It definitely is the actor. It looks the the age of the actor is great. I would have preferred more of an action pose, I mean, holding perhaps with one arm his helmet and with the other perhaps holding his gun or a weapon. That would have been great. Also, they would install maybe like a you know jetpack in the back or something like that, or even other weapons. That would have been even greater than this. It feels that it's it's a nice buzz, but it's simple. It's very simple the depiction. Now, the depiction on the face is nice, it's fine, looking down perhaps, but I do like the paint job is done excellent, really nice boss, and I know some people are going to go for it, you can see the only weapon that he's carrying is his handgun, but that's it, you know, and of course the weapon he has on this arm, the paint job is great, the detail is great, it's just the fact that he's looking down, he looks kind of tired, you know, some people may love it, you know, that's fine with me, I wish it was a little more action on that, but it they did a fantastic job regardless on the way they did it uh, looks looks good so there's no denying that they did it good and they have done some other statues they did this one just kind of kind of give you an idea just for people to know that they did have and they have this one already on sale this is the original they have the other one technically is a variant but as you can see he is hold he already had the weapon in his hand which i like this one i love this one and to be honest with you this is i perhaps my choice the one i would prefer to have with the portrait that they just created that's the only thing that i would say that is kind of like a bad thing because the other one it would be nice to have like a interchangeable portrait so now some people are probably gonna have two they want to have this and perhaps that was the idea to have this one and then have the other one as the companion to go alongside it you know helmet thing this 120 the other one is 130 i think in some way, it kind of makes sense that they're doing that. Uh, at least from a business standpoint, you have a variant, and people love variants. So they go for that. So it's cool. Nothing wrong with that. And finally, I want to show you the last one here, which is the Star Wars The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker. And this is a great scene for this movie. I know a lot of people don't like The Last Jedi, but I do. I enjoy that part of the film, particularly this part of the film, when he comes to battle or to fight and uh, or his spirit or whatever. But um, I think they did a fantastic job with the portrait and the sculpt is really well done. It's really nice. You know, it's cool. Even the base with that, you know, the raid and that the salt that it's there. 
That portrait is well done. That sculpt, whoever sculpted it, did a really nice job. And the paint job is excellent. It's really nice. And even look at the hands. Look at the hand. Look at the detail in the hands. I don't know if you can see it there. But the fingernails are well painted. The hand is well painted. It's a really nice... And of course, you're going to lose some of this detail when you know you have the final product. But whoever did the prototype really went... You know, be you know, all and beyond. They went above and beyond what he needed to do. He did a really fantastic job. I really it's a nice statue, two hundred fifty dollars. I think it's a great price. This is probably a one seven, if I'm not mistaken. It's a one six, even better. So it's a great scale within the gentle giant scale because sometimes they say one six and it's not as big as comparison to other companies. But I think it's a really nice job. So I would say gentle giant again, and diamond select toys continue to rock and the, the stuff they do let me read some of the comments here it's classy i might consider the weak piece eddie saying yeah i, I tell you it's a nice one I, I i too love the last jedi yeah i do like it you know how some people dislike the movie i went to the movie theater and people were so quiet when it went out but to me i understood right away the way, of course, the director was going, the direction he was choosing to go was very different. It's the film that I felt that it was going very different. There are things that don't really work as well, perhaps on the comedy side. They're trying to push on comedy. But I do like that he was changing the concept because prior to that, I feel that with Star Wars was the idea that some people have the power, like only a few people come with power. You know, that it's, you're chosen among many, only a few are chosen to be above everything. Of course, the Jedi gene whatever so he was breaking a lot of the things that actually george um lucas was trying to implement with the that really didn't yell so well with the prequels he was breaking that habit it's like it's like uh in many ways going back to the idea that anyone can be a hero and it's about choices so it's you know i review it i didn't review it i talk about it i know it's, it's a divisive film i enjoyed it i did enjoy that some aspects of the film, some parts not, but I did enjoy particularly that stand from, you know, with Lucas there and that final stand. That's one of my favorite parts of that, of that film. But also, you know, Luke, as a, you can see as he comes to, uh, a, you know, a, in the last moment of his life, there's a maturity that comes, you know, with that and uh, understanding that no, no one is perfect. You know, I think sometimes people want to think of Luke as a perfect guy, but he wasn't perfect on the originals. He made a lot of mistakes, and I feel that in, in many ways that the new movies reflected that, but also that in the end he understood that, his place in the whole scheme of things, so whatever. So I'm not here to talk about that film because that is kind of opening a can of worms and people don't want to hear it, but I definitely like it, and I think that they did a fantastic job with this milestone statue. I think it represents that so, so well. You know, it's is what it is all right my friends so we're moving from diamond select and gentle giant i want to take you now to the next company and i want to go uh to royal selangor now we're going to go to sideshow for that purpose and uh actually i didn't know like this morning i was checking today i was checking some of the stuff i like, want to make sure that everything was done properly you know go into the notes and all that stuff and i saw royal selangor just release these things and i was like Again, blown away because Royal Salon is a company, of course, that does pewter stuff. This is a very high end. I love pewter. I've talked about pewter before. They're not cheap at all products. This is very on the high end side. But Royal Salon is a company that does probably one of the, the best pewter companies in the world. Um, one of the oldest, too. Here you can see there is the Hulk Origins Gamma Green, they call it, which is technically a silver. They call it the silver one. It's not silver, it's green, but they go in and they have the gold one, which is even more expensive. There's more limited. Now, the green one is limited to 400 worldwide. The price for this one, as you can see, almost $1,200. It's not cheap at all. But when you look at this one, I would say that I'm necessarily a big fan of this particular. They have other Hulks. The other Hulks that they did, that was the other Hulk that did. I'm more a fan than this one. This is a different variation. And I, I found it too busy with the two characters behind him, which is, I think, the transformation that is happening. They trying to represent the transformation from Bruce Banner becoming the Hulk. So they go with the process. It's only 10 inches uh, tall. And I do like that they add the, the comic panels in the background just for, you know, for detail, contrast. It looks really good. Uh, the thing that we're going to look at SciShow that, you know, right now with the the 
the Colossus and Wolverine statue, the concept about having a comic book in the background is not a sideshow concept. It's a Royal Sunangor concept. That's something that they've been doing for a while. It, they're not even the first one doing it, but they've been doing it. Um, that many companies did it in the past. There were a lot of companies doing it, stuff like that in the past, years, years ago, and it was a fantastic concept. And Royal Sunangor is the one that has been doing it more recently, but it's not necessarily the only company that has ever done. Even Diamond Selectors used to do stuff like that. But here, um, it looks great. You can see the transformation. However, you know, like you're looking for a big statue transformation. I still think XM Studios did the best transformation ever. And I think they, they were doing also with Legendary Bees. I think they were also involved in the concept of the design and everything. But um, it's it's good. And I know there's big fans of Royal Songor out there. Big collectors. Only 400. Here you can see the origins of that. This is just probably the poor guy's <laughs> version because if you want now the rich man's version, then you go to this one, which is a little bit more expensive, $1,300. And this is the golden one. It's only, only 200. So it's half the edition size. This is gonna be probably the more sold out. I actually like the golden one. It's not bad at all. Look at that, the evolution of that. I think it looks better with the golden one. So if the other one is what, 11 or something, you're paying a little hundred dollars to a hundred, two hundred dollars more. I think you should go for this one. And definitely you get one that is even more collectible. Again, it's full, it's pewter. This is a material that will last forever in comparison to a polystone statue. It's a very small in comparison. Um, you compare it to others, a, a statues is not that big. Just the dimensions are small. Again, this is almost twelve hundred uh, for one hundred fifty dollars. You get this one, not bad. Now, looking at some of the details for dimension purpose, as you can see, it's ten point three ten inches tall. It's not that big, uh, but it looks great for your office space. If you really want something more classy looking, then definitely Royal Selangor is the one to do it. Now, let me show you some of the stuff that Royal Selangor has been doing. For those I have talked about him in the past here on the channel, but let me show you. Uh, I'm going to look at Batman in just a moment, but give me an idea of some of the stuff they do, particularly with the Marvel license. I love that Captain America. I think it's a great depiction of Captain America. The Captain America now, of course, with the motorcycle looks great, but I still think that the more classic one the with the Avengers, uh, that is the, with the Avengers cover. That is definitely my favorite one there. This is, for example, the ones that they had before. They got the Black Panther. These are completely sold out, as you can see. I don't see anything else. If you follow, you look at my channel, you're going to look at some of the stuff that they find. They did like the Hulk they did, you know, some time ago. That was fantastic. I talked about it a couple of years ago. That Royal Selangor uh, Hulk was probably my favorite. I think this is great, but the original was better in my opinion. Now, I want to talk, take you to the Batman bus. This is $1,800. This is not cheap. They're 300 bus and they went for the Jim Lee style 1600, uh, no, 1600, 16 inches, almost 17 inches. So it's a really, it's, it's not bad. It's within close to the one, you know, it's pretty, pretty substantial on the size, which is amazing because Royal Solonger normally doesn't do stuff that's big as far as I know, but this bus looks amazing. And I was looking at it and I'm thinking for pewter at this price point, when you compare it to the other ones, definitely you're getting a piece that perhaps you know it's something that you're not going to get much you know for that price when you buy in pewter when you're buying this type of material and i was looking at the material i don't see if there's any differences on the material but it says the you know what it is you know like it has to be pewter well that's what royal song or does and definitely it's going to be a bit heavy um this metallic alloys and stuff like that. Love the base. Definitely the base is going to be polystone, but the itself, Batman is going to be, in this case, is going to be made out of pewter. But look at this one. I like that this is a very classic look. They went for that classic look. It looks really nice. I love it. How bright it is, you know, the metal, the metallic look that he has. And this is not a painted metallic. This is real you're talking about real pewter work it looks really great very nicely done again royal Selangor really killing it with this type of pieces this is not for everyone this is too rich for my blood people complain about sometimes about you know the prices of certain things and you have to understand that, that it depends a lot on the materials too 
when we look at Royal Selangor right here, for example, this is the official store. This company is based in Singapore. One of the oldest companies in the world doing still doing pewter work. But when you look at some of the stuff they do here on their website, let me kind of close some of these windows here. Look at the collectibles. Look at them. Let's see Marvel, for example. I'm going to give you an idea of the Marvel stuff they produce. They have a lot of stuff that still some of the stuff makes it to SciShow eventually. Some of the stuff doesn't. Here you can see the limited the, the black the, that that Black Panther looks awesome, man. They're going for that Wolverine. This is the stuff that we that we've been seeing. It's just terrific, man. This is the one I was telling you about. Six hundred dollars for this Hulk right here. Great. Very nice. This is my favorite Hulk from Royal Selangor. I think this is perhaps the one that, and it's cheaper too. Uh, you know, prices have kind of gone down in some of the older pieces. Now the production is more expensive. Royal Selangor is really doing really good. Now, if we're gonna look at another collaboration uh, with companies and collectibles, let's look at the DC. That Batman looks awesome too. Look at that one. <laughs> That's a 24 karat gold gilt. Man, these are expensive. Look at that. These are great. I love this Royal Selangor pieces, man. Every time I see what they do, it amazes me to see this company and the way they do certain stuff. I don't see that bus from Royal Selangor here. Right there. Wait a minute. Look at the price here. I'm trying to think about this. How is it that here it's this price us dollars almost six thousand dollars is it like there's two different versions because here at sideshow now let me look at it i was kind of considering because i was thinking something doesn't seem right about the price why is it that this one is 1800 is that a, even an accurate amount This limited edition Batman bus is sculpted with a serious expression and a commanding statue, meticulously encapsulating Batman's relentless determination to safeguard Gotham and a whole justice to uh, the bus masterfully incorporates sketch lines of Batman face and captures the Cape Crusader expression with striking accuracy. With a serious expression and imposing sta stature, this masterful piece captures Batman essence with striking accuracy. They're repeating the same thing. And like they repeat it twice. It doesn't say what kind of material it is, though. Now I'm kind of curious because here, look and see, this is not like, this is US dollars. This is not like Singapore dollars. It's like there's two different versions. This is 6,000 bucks. Unless that there's a typo on SciShow, which it could be. And I was thinking like, if they're going to do a fully, you know, pewter statue, it got to be more expensive than that. It's limited to only 300 individual numbers pieces worldwide. So, and how much is it that they have here? 300 so i i would say that there's something wrong here i'm not sure why i don't know if that's correct but i would assume that this should be the price because of the scale like look at the height so and this of course is based on jim lee i think someone made a mistake unless they have different versions now compare to compared to what are they do they have different versions No, it doesn't say. So I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I think that someone make a boo boo, made a boo boo here, maybe at SciShow, and they priced it at eighteen hundred. Unless they sell it at eighteen hundred in America, so that would be a steal, better than what you buy. You buy directly from uh, Royal Selangor. But sometimes the prices here might might be off. There's something off about the whole thing. So just to give you an idea, I think it's a fantastic piece. I think the price is steep, but if it's pewter, then definitely I'm thinking at this scale, at this size, definitely I wouldn't be surprised if they sell it for six thousand um, dollars. If selling it for fifteen hundred dollars, I found that as soon as I saw it today, this morning, I said, "Look, that's a great deal for something this size." I was thinking that, oh, it might be something very tiny, like a tiny little mini bus, and then all of a sudden I saw the scale and the size, and I'm thinking, "Wait a minute, this is pretty big and pretty substantial." Is it made out of polystone? Maybe they have a cheaper version. Baby Royal Selangor wants to get into also polystone stuff, which I doubt because they, they are a pewter company. That's what they do. 
but you never know. So I would say just keep an eye. Maybe when I get more information, I can update some of that info. But this is what I see right now. It's kind of strange in my opinion. All right. Let me look at some of the... Um, it looks cool. I have a lot of Royal Selangor stuff. You do? Okay, Travis. It looks great. I'm tempted, but very pricey. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it is. It's a gorgeous piece. I think the, the likeness with Batman, in my opinion, is great. I with the they definitely they nail the Jim Lee style there. It looks really, really good. All right. So now that we're talking about like high-end products or companies that they do a lot of more niche type of things, I want to take you now to Regal Robot. Regal Robot always also producing very limited stuff for you know, in this case for Star Wars fans. And they let's see what they have with the um the Star Wars stuff. They did this week a new, uh, what they call the Signature Edition uh, Claudio Concept Maquette Replica. If you follow this company, they do this maquettes that were used for the original films. This is actually for Return of the Jedi, if I'm not mistaken. This was the concept the artists used. They did different maquettes. So what Regal Robot does is replicate the stuff that they, the props that were used for the different films. So they've been building this, uh, th this maquette collection where they have all these different props that were used for the different films. And this is the new one that they did. Almost sold out. They have two editions. This is the the, the very low stock. I, I If you follow, I was looking at this stuff on, on Facebook. I think they only have a few left. It's only a very, very few left. Here you can see it's only 14 left in stock. It's $700. It comes with, um, if you order this, which is the, the more expensive version of it. Let's see. Then you're going to see, for example, it comes with the plaque signed by the person who was involved in the in the, the person who did the sketch, but also the person who was involved in the production of this props for the film. And um, Kel Ralston, of course, did the sketch. It's 83. So there was only originally 83 pieces and 83 sketches just for this particular edition, which makes it even more valuable. So this is one that definitely is not for everyone. You can see the sketches that were used for this character. Um, this is definitely for the hardcore Star Wars fan. The ones that they want to have the props, the replicas, all the stuff that is as connected connection with the films. And there's a big fan base out there. Um, they already, again, they sold out from those 83 pieces. They only left, they have only 14. I'm sure they're going to sell quickly. They're not that big. This is for high-end collectors that really love this stuff. And I've talked about Royal Selangor many, many times. Here you can see pictures of the originals of the, of the stuff that was used for the film. So he's been building this collection to kind of bring to life. Their life size based on that concept is the same thing. And you can see, of course, from this sketches, from this maquette replicas, they were able to produce all the props, all the, you know, the masks, all the stuff that the actors were using, all the stone artists were using for that. And here so far, you can see what they have done with this collection. You can bring all this archive. It's cool, man. It's not for everyone. Definitely not necessarily. For, it's not for me, but it's impressive um, that this company does this and they do really, really well with this. If you want something that is really close to the source material, very close, signed by the artist, you're definitely going to get this one. So this is the very, the more exclusive one, $700 for this particular version. You can go for the cheaper version, which is the one that doesn't have the signature. It has a plaque too, which is great, but not the sketch, that is $400. So technically you're paying for the sketch, for the numbering with the artist, which is a little more on the, of course you're paying for that. But this works the same. Also the plaque from the, the artist. Fantastic, once again, great work, thank you. He did a really nice job, look at that. You know, these are ugly, man. But when you look at them and you remember the film, then definitely that it makes sense to see what they were doing. You know, I think Star Wars is always going to be considered one of the classic films because of what it really means for fans uh, of, you know, of all the sci-fi stuff. You know, the stuff that Star Wars is, is definitely it's in our hearts. It's something that I really, we, I think we all treasure. I personally treasure a lot. Um, grew up watching those movies, the original movies. I've always been a big fan of Star Wars and it's always nice to see that. All right, let's look at some of this. This looks cool. I have a lot of Royal Swinger stuff. Gorgeous piece. Oh, 
But yeah, it, it's cool. You know, we're talking about Royal Sun or here. Let me drink some water because we've been kind of covering a little bit here. Thank you very much to everyone that has been watching. It's always um, very, very cool to be here. Let me drink the, the water here. Ooh. Got some water there. <laughs> All right. We still have a, a way to go. There's a couple companies that we still, man, we still haven't even touched the surface in some way. Um, there are still companies that I want to cover. We got, we still got Star Ace Toys. We got Star Exva, Zodiaco Studio, Huera. Uh, again, we're going to cover Mesco, uh, Iron Studios, Infinity Studio, Way Studio, uh, Prime Studio, SciShow, PCS, and Queen Studios. Well, I want to say thank you very much for spending this Saturday with me tonight, uh, watching and sharing. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend as well. All right, my friends. So I want to go now. Let's go to the statues. Uh, again, we go for the scales and I want to start. I want to go to SciShow again. And the reason I want to go to SciShow is because I want to cover another statue here. I want to cover this company right here, which is Star Ace Toys. Star Ace Toys just released two statues for uh, the Ghostbusters. I haven't watched the new Ghostbusters film. I've been watching some of the reviews, people really bombing that film, saying that it's not that great. I will definitely, I'm not sure if I want to watch it. I was really excited to watch it in some way, but after the reviews, I'm, I like to watch the Ghostbusters at the movie theater. I may find the time to do it. I'm not so sure. I think I'm more excited to watch the new kong movie the godzilla uh, and kong movie that is coming that looks more sick in my opinion really looking forward at the end of this month which is technically next weekend so we'll see what happens that definitely has more of my excitement i don't know sure about the, the, the this i don't know to tell me if you have watched the film tell me that it's great or not but i don't know but in any case um the company is producing now sorry toys producing this statues they're one eight scale so they're not that big but these are made out of poly resin, poly, you know, poly stone. I think the likeness is really great. And one thing I want to point out, the price is not bad. $235 for this. This particularly, like here, like looking at this, it looks really good. At that scale, it looks great. The portrait looks fantastic. It looks like Egon right there. The artist, you know, the 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 actor, the late actor really looks great there. And the base, I would say, I'm kind of torn with it. I like that it has the symbol, necessarily like the, you know, what's around it, you know, like, I don't know if it's that like, I don't know, marshmallow or something or snow, I, I, I don't know, it just, it's not necessarily my cup of tea, I think they could have just make it a more cleaner look, more simplistic, just having the, maybe like a black scent base and in the center having that, you know, the, the symbol, of course, of the, the sign of the Ghostbuster would be better. But besides that, the sculpt is really nice on a Egon. Only 22 centimeters tall. It's not that tall in comparison. It's a one eight scale. It looks great. Very nice choice for his portrait. I think this kind of based on the uh, that poster, if I'm not mistaken, the famous one of the famous posters that we have. Let's see if we can find it. The Ghostbusters original original poster. Let me see if I can find that here. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Look at that. Um, I'm not. It's sort of like that. I don't know. If we can see it well here. When you look at it here, that's an example of this. It's kind of like the look of the poster. Yeah. It does have kind of like that little bit of the pose. Sort of. But it's not bad at all. Very cool one. I don't know why they didn't release all of them. Maybe they're going to release the other. Um, Peter Beckman later. Winston wasn't on the first film like that, but on the poster, but um, it's sort of like that. I think they went on their own route. It's not necessarily the same. This one is great with Ray. Look at that. A complaints for me about it.
Yeah, that is not bad. I, I do like it. I would say it's not bad. The base, I can deal with it. I, I wish it was cleaner, but um, it's not bad. And I think they did a fantastic job in really having the look of the actors. It looks really good. Uh, they did a really nice job with it. Uh, definitely, this is something that Star Ace told you we have to keep attention, uh, pay attention to what they're doing with this collection. It's very nice. Of course, right now is the time to sell because the, the popularity of the movies. You know, people are talking about Ghostbusters. That's when the companies are start selling their products. So we'll see what happens. I think the job is well done with this, with the paint job. The paint job is well done. The sculpt is great. The paint job is great. The scale is not that big, but I, I it's doable. So overall, there's nothing to complain about it. Job well done here for sure. All right, so that starts Ace Toys. So definitely loving what they're doing. Now, while we're here, um, well, actually, let me take you now to another company that I actually want to cover. And that we're going to go to um, Spec Fiction. And the reason I want to take you to Spec Fiction is because there's this company that I want to really cover here. Which is Exterexva. This company we have covered before. I've talked about it before. They do a lot of, particularly female characters. They do some gorgeous port, uh, gorgeous, gorgeous sculpts uh, with female characters. They, they, where well, there is their own creations, but also they've been doing uh, from uh, different other uh, gaming franchises. But we also been seeing that they start. They've been doing for uh, Naruto Shippuden, and this is uh, Sakura. Uh, Haruno, and this is a, a version of Sakura, not necessarily with like kind of like a wedding dress. Four hundred nine, four hundred nine dollars is not that expensive, I would say, for a one seven scale. And uh, you know, you could say, you know, like that's kind of expensive if you're not really into it. But what I really think that makes this piece, uh, first of all, the sculpt, the design is really nice. She looks great there. But what really kind of prompted me to talk about it is the fact of that base. Look at that base. I would say that Star Expert does really nice bases. They did the stair and the way they did the stair is very, very cool looking. Look at her dress too. Very nice choice. Something that I wouldn't expect from Naruto. I'm not necessarily a, the biggest Naruto fan, but look at the detail on the stairs, like the marble stairs, the wooden stairs, the, 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 the hand, all that, man, it looks great. The paint job on this piece is really excellent. But the base alone, I think, is a selling point for this one. And for $400, some, some of these pieces can go even more expensive than that. People would ask for a lot of money. Other companies would ask you just for that base alone. They will ask you for $800 for this scale. So I think that it's not bad at all. And the detail, it's a very unique, very style. This is definitely for the narrative fan that would like to have all these different pieces that are unique. And uh, here you can see others that they have done in the same collection. All the wedding dresses that they have chosen, all the night dresses they have chosen. I have took a few of this, but they are really fantastic. And definitely this is part of that collection to give you an idea. Very nice choice. I do like the paint job, the choice uh, that they do it here. And let's go back to kind of give you an idea just to, to have a concept of what they, they're doing with this collection. This is the other piece. Look at this one. Big base for sure, too. And that is huge. That is super huge. As you can see, that was $429, I think. Again, fantastic price. I talk about this one. You know, I think sometime last year. This was definitely look at that concept. These are very unique pieces, very different. Not for everyone, for sure. But uh, if you're into Naruto and you want like a very unique style, you're willing to go the extra mile for like new depictions are different than anything else. Then definitely this is something that really is right there up your alley for sure. Very cool. I think each one has a very different look, different view. They're all excellent in their own way. Very excellent for sure. As you can see, each one of them. And let's see if we can get the last one. If it's on pre-order here, he hasn't been sold out. I think one is already probably sold. 
But in any case, um, just looking at this newer one, they definitely like the other ones are based on other series, other games, other stuff that they do. But uh, black labels, or things like that. But I think this is great. I think this company again, Asterix, but does interesting things i spec fiction really sells a lot of products are very unique very niche and i think that this is something that you know it's nice to look out from time to time i enjoy to see what these artists are doing really breaking the mold doing things that are very different very unique different than anything else so that's great all right so that was extra expa now like well we're here i expect fiction actually let me take you to another company uh we're going to go back and i want to cover if you're, uh, again, talking about animation, uh, anime, or manga, I want to cover another company that, to be honest with you, is it's really great. I'm a big Sensei fan. I have talked about Sensei on this channel many, many times. Here you can see Zodiac Studio. Zodiac Studio is a company that, um, let me put this, not in alphabetical order, but look at uh, the new stuff. So you have an idea of what they're doing this week. They, they do a lot of kind of things where everything that has to do with anime, they do a fa amazing stuff and within the, what was that? The one six scale, if I'm not mistaken, yes, they are doing the Saint Seiya nice of the Zodiac. Amazing stuff. I love what they do here. I love this stuff. You know, I'm a big Saint Seiya fan. So they have all these different pieces that you can see on pre-order a lot of different pre-orders. Some of this stuff has been operated for a while. So of course, some people are going to complain. I've been talking of this company since pretty much, I think since the first piece of this piece right here that you can see right here, this Machine Hero Wataru. I talked about it like two years ago. And yeah, one of those pieces that perhaps a lot of people say, well, when are we gonna see them? You know, a lot of the stuff that is there, but in China, but they have some really nice stuff. Of course, they got the Sensei Taurus Aldebaran. I always like that guy um, here, but here are the new pieces. Just to cover that, they have the Aries Xion, Aries, and this is different versions. There's actually three different versions. Let me kind of go and show you. They got the classic version, they got the exclusive version, and then they have the luxury version. So let's look first at the classic version. $555. This is just like a stand, is standing there. Nice paint job. Very nice depiction. If you have read the manga, you have watched the card animation, definitely you're going to have an understanding of Sensei, uh, Nice of the Zodiac. And definitely the character is a simple, and you go for the simple, you know, like simple pose, museum pose, there you go. Now, if you want to go for the exclusive version, which is definitely the golden suit, which in my opinion, I, I prefer this one over the other one. I will go for this one. Look at that. Nice depiction of the character. Simple museum pose. Looks great. Nothing wrong with that. But now, if you want something else, here you have the luxury version. This is a one six cost statue. This is $963. This one. This one. It's not a museum pose. This is an action pose. And definitely this is the one that people are going to feel more intrigued with it. And uh, this has a light up feature. You can see his power. If you're going for his, his action for him doing the attack. This is an interesting concept because a lot of companies, what they do when they do the exclusives, they give you like an extra part, like an extra thing to use, an extra accessory, things like that. What they are doing here is actually changing the whole concept. They're going uh, the whole different sculpt they did that even with the regular one it's a different suit the different armor in comparison to the exclusive and this one legendary it's an actual pose they went completely different it's a different approach to it and in some way it feels like okay if you're a completionist you want to have them all you know although i will say aries is not necessarily my f most favorite of all the characters but that is an idea now the other thing that they have is this uh, siren sorrento and they have the luxury and they got the classic version. Now, let me kind of give you an idea of the classic version. $435. This is just the basic one. And the prototype under approval, you can see that. I'm looking at it. So you have, it's not bad because it comes with the interchangeable parts. You can see the interchangeable things, which in my opinion, for that price, you're getting a really nice deal. 
you got the interchangeable and i love the fact that they get the little stands for the the bus for the interchangeable portraits and then of course you get the i think that's what it is yeah let me look maybe some of the details i don't want to just lie to you or say oh this is what you get it so you get the kid the switch out you get the wing switch out you get the cloak switch out. Okay, so you get them here. The extra portal would stand. And the materials, polystone, polyurethane, ABS. So it has all the things that they do nowadays. $435. It's a great deal. For technically for a lot of different switch outs that has a 1-6 scale. I think it's a great deal. Now, looking at the legendary luxury version, which is the one that has everything. It's almost $800. This one has a very nice base concept base very unique base that is a nice display the background itself that is really really good the sirens right there this pixies or sirens that is really a really nice concept even the ship has some nice detail as you can see right there and you also get the interchangeable parts as the other one where you can change the bus you can change the wings but the background and that little detail there I can see the price. Love what they do with the water, that clear water. That is fantastic. Some of these companies are doing amazing work with they, they represent the water. That is, is so good. I'm not sure if they're using, in this case, resin for that or polyurethane or whatever, but it looks fantastic on display when you're doing it like that. I think the other companies like Twitterhead, they should do that. Other companies, even SciShow, they're not as great when they try to represent fire with their bases. And of course, this is translucent, so you can work the, the light up feature. This is the way to do it. And I think that I wish more companies were able to actually have this level of detail at this transparency when you're looking at this, you know, the fire and all that. I think this is fantastic. It's a great one. Now, another thing that they produce, just to give you an idea, that was on pre-order, is they got the Capricorn. And they're going to start selling now the clothes, the, the clots, the, the clothes, the, the armors themselves. The Capricorn one. This armor looks great. It's cool for those who only want to kind of display the armors by themselves. That is an, actually a great idea. Great concept. It's an extra part, $220 that you can actually, if you already have the other figures, you can actually display and you can actually collect them as well. So that's great. But let me kind of, while we're here, let me look at Zodiacus because there are a lot of things that they've been doing, which is great. Look at this one. This Athena uh, Exclamation Deluxe. This is uh, almost $2,000. Look at this big display. One six scale as well. With that Athena, that is super huge, perhaps too big in my opinion. And that's the reason why you're paying a big price is because that huge base in the background. It's kind of cool, but I still feel like it's like pricey for that. Oh, then you got this a Scorpio Milo right here. That looks another another one of the gold knights, the golden knights. Look at that one with the action. Definitely, they went a really nice one with this one and the changeable portrait as well. Very cool. Just to give you an idea of that one. But here you can see the ones on the wait list. The Leo. It's always been one popular character, definitely. Some people would say that they look too busy with that, in my opinion. But I think it's kind of cool that they're doing, like, the are trying to represent the effects of the power on a fight. Because when you look at the Knights of the Zodiac... Uh, you're always gonna kind of consider they that they're always in a in a fight. Uh, this is another one, the Torahs that I like. I like this is one of my favorite characters. They represent Aldebaran really nicely there in a fight. And also, it comes with interchangeable. You know, you can remove the parts, which is great. Which I think you can do with the others. The effects you can remove with the others, which is great. And also, you have the interchangeable portrait. It's really cool, man. They did a fantastic job with Taurus right there with Aldebaran. But other pieces, you can see, I always like this one, man. This is the Libra Doko. This is transparent and solid. This is a very nice one, in my opinion. This is the bonus bundle. This is a, I talk about it this one. This was on pre order. Overall, this is a great company. Uh, the concept that they're producing is just unique. If you're definitely into the Knights of the Zodiac, they also handle other franchises, of course, Attack on Titan. They have the, uh, you know, other 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 franchises. Um, 
I'm trying to remember this one. I talk about Green Grimjaw also when this one was on priority, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're doing a lot of things. So, yeah, just to give you an idea, they're doing so many things. This company is doing a lot of things for the uh, anime collector, for the animation collector. Uh, primarily, they started with a lot of the... The Sensei has been the most popular, I think, but they're also building another collection, so we'll see what happens. So, uh, Zodiaco, uh, Zodiaco Studio, definitely it's a company that I would recommend anyone to pay attention to. I would love to see one of these pieces in person. I mean, too, man. They look fantastic. I've seen the pictures on the presentations in Japan, uh, and, they, and they look fantastic. I like, when you look at it in comparison to the people around them, um, it's great. I, I, one of my things that I would love to do is to travel to Asia to one of these big conventions, like the Winter Convention, I think. Um, there's a couple of things they, they do in Asia that we'll love to see because that, there you can see some amazing work for sure. Uh, amazing anime work. All right, so, all right, my friends, uh, let me take a quick break and we we'll come back. Um, definitely, we've been covering a good amount of stuff today. Uh, so far, you know, we've been covering, we've been moving fast, which is great. Uh, we still got a couple of things that I, when I come back that I want to cover. I want to talk about Weta. I want to talk about Mesco again, Iron Studios, Infinity Studio, Way Studios, Prime One Studio, SciShow, of course, PCS, and Queen Studio. So definitely, we have some big hitters coming their way. Just give me a few minutes and... Uh, We'll see. Uh, we'll take it from there. So I'll see you in just a moment.
heaven just knows what it was Will I go back to the place where I belong? Everyone could break my heart But I try my best to not fall apart And I find it hard to let go The memories keep me together Gotta fight till the end No pressure, no pressure And I find it hard to say no Could have want to want something better Could have want to never say never You'll be my pleasure in my heart So I'll try my best to not fall apart And I find it hard to let go The memories keep me together Gotta fight till the end No pressure, no pressure And I find it hard to say no To the ones who want something better To the ones who never say All right, my friends. So, uh, thank you, thank you very much, those who are watching. Thank you for staying with me tonight. Uh, each one of them, each one, every person that has been stopping by, say hello, thank you. And let me know you're watching. If you're watching here from or you stop by, just tell me that you're watching or just leave the comments there. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, I'm always all ears. So we uh, like to chat with you. Uh, we still have a, a good night to go. Definitely. I, this, this week was amazing. There's definitely been a lot of different collectibles and companies are just doing amazing stuff. So we're going to still cover a lot of these companies. Uh, I want to cover as much as possible and uh, really kind of kind of give you a breakdown of the stuff that is out, what I think about it. Um, definitely my recommendations. So, you know, opinions and all that. So we'll cover that. And again, don't forget to leave a like, uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you're watching and uh, subscribe. If you're watching this for the first time and you like what I pr I'm producing in this channel. I've been doing this for a long time and I have the videos to prove it. All right. In any case, let's go. And let me take you. We're going to go to Weta. I want to take you to Weta Workshop. We can come here also to Spec Vision to do it. But I want to take you to Weta so we can look at the newest statue they produce. This is the Witch King of the Unseen Lands, that one six scale statue. This is part of the classic series and what they've been doing lately. $399, $400. Um, this is definitely one that is definitely for the fans. If you like this, of course, I, I, in the film that this was, what, what was the film? I try to remember, uh, in what's the first film or the second film in the trilogy where of course you see the spirits of these Kings. Uh, and of course, Weta was involved in the, in doing the work there, but like that looks really fantastic. It looks like he has like a clear resin. And you can see to, to kind of give this idea of the, you know, the ghostly image that is a ghost. It's kind of very, it's very, very unique for sure. But there's different angles, as you can see. Look at this from this angle. Again, you know, Guerra really does a nice job. I really like the way they do the back of the 
it looks really nice there is a very translucent thing i love the simplicity of that base really nice job on that this you would say that it's a simple paint job but even on the porter you can see the the likeness and it has a little bit of like hints of green also which is kind of cool i haven't really watched lord of the rings in a while i normally try to watch it every so often but sometimes it, you can pass a couple of years until i rewatch the whole trilogy and i need to go back and do it i normally like to watch rewatch stuff like in all in a bulk and uh, from time to time, I like to go back. And definitely, this is one of my favorite series of all time. Look at that portrait. Very nice. Nice job. Definitely look at that. This is what I'm telling you about that translucent resin there. Very nice job. How it kind of, you can see it travels from the figure and in the end, the edges of it really kind of gives that ethereal, ethereal image. Very well done. And here in this picture, you can see. Very nice. Definitely. This is for the Lord of the Rings fan. Um, definitely. This is going to be a nice addition. Very classy. Very well done. Definitely. What are always doing really amazing job. This was a sculpted here. The principal sculptor is Bridget uh, Weiss. Wes. She does amazing work. I will tell you the stuff that she has been part of like Galadriel, she did that one. So she's been on a lot of the re she's been involved in a lot of the really nice pieces like the Bilbo Baggins, the Master Collection, the Dead Marshes. So you can see she's been working with Weta for a while and she does a lot of the beautiful renditions. The the Coronation Arwing that's that I think is really nice. She was also involved in, in the production there. So it is an effort that is done, but I think she's a phenomenal sculptor and I love the classiness of her sculpts. Very well done. So, yeah, Weta, again, great company. A uh, company that definitely uh, always inspires. And they do classic stuff. They they know what they do. They concentrate on what they do. And they do it well. So, Bridget, a renowned sculptor who trained with uh, HR teacher in Switzerland. So, she's a great sculptor. She's a, if I'm not, she's a traditional sculptor. So, really well, well done. Fantastic job to her. And fantastic job from Weta once again. Great company to what scale for this one, Cypher? This is a one six scale. You referring to this one, the Witch King, that is a one six. So it's part of the one six scale collection that they've been doing. Another great, another home run, in my opinion, for the Lord of the Rings. Very nice. And I think the price is just right on point. $400 where it needs to be. Arwen. Arwen is also a one six, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go back. Because they're all part of the same collection. Here, let me see if I can go back. I'll tell you in a moment. Arwen is also on sale. Yeah, this, that is also a 1-6 scale. So this is all part of the same collection. As you can see, it's all the base is the same. So um, really cool. I'm telling you, like, uh, and the price is perfect. I, I like this one. Also, I like this Galadriel that... Um, but this is the miniature statue that we talked about it last time. This is a miniature statue. Uh, this is also a great one. Really well done. But Arwen is 1.6. So let's see if we can actually look at the collection itself of 1.6 that so they've been doing over this classic series. Let's see if we can look at it. If there's a way to pick it. To give you an idea. End of line, back catalog, our products. The classic series right there. Classic series tends to be always 1.6 if I'm not mistaken. So you have that one. You can order right now. Also the Carnation Arwen. That's a 1.6 right there. King Aragon. That's a 1.6. So they, these two pieces are going to work together. The Saruman also 399. So these are the ones that you have seen on the classic. But also in the classic series. They also done stuff for DC. As you can see. But primarily, they've been concentrating on doing more like a museum poses for all these characters. Now, the Bilbo Baggins at his desk, that was also part of the, the that classic series. Although they have the very exclusive one. They have the whole thing. That's a beautiful piece. I talked about it uh, probably two, three years ago. They also have the Galadriel. Uh, this is one when it actually was cheaper. Like I think this is in, this, in the special sale right now. Look at Galadriel of the, the Council. They have it for $5.159. 
That is an excellent deal right there. And this is a nice piece. So right now, maybe they have a special, perhaps because they they have the whatever's remain. So that is a deal, man. That is a deal for $159, $160. I will go for it for sure. That's a nice one. All right. So again, what I do an amazing work. Oops, I hit my microphone. Sorry for that. All right, so let's move and I want to take you now to Mesco. And we're going to look at Mesco because Mesco just released a Conan the Barbarian based on, the, of course, 1982 film. This is the Statics, uh, Static 6, which is a 1-6 scale collection. Um, they did a Conan. You remember the Conan they did a uh, few years back and did well and that conan is fantastic one of my favorite conans that i've seen you know a statue from any company now they continue with the conan collection it's kind of kind of mesco has been kind of quiet with this collection with the static six it's been quiet about the statues for a few years i think through the pandemic they've been quiet but now it's like this is like, like going back and they come in with a vengeance they come in with this uh conan he has the the port the face definitely you can see arnold schwarzenegger there and of course this cover this poster all the you know, it's just awesome. It's a $275. I think it's a fantastic price. As you can see, this is a tribute. Uh, Mesco Static 6, Conan the Barbarian, two-figure statues, translates Renato Cacero's art style into a three-dimensional tribute to his classic film poster. Look at that one. Very nice. I think it's a really nice look at the po like the portrait. You can certainly see Arnold there. Really well done. Nice paint job on that one. Very cool. I even like the base and the detail on the base. The portrait, definitely that that homage. It's all painted. It's all fully sculpted. Very nice piece. I think the price is right where it needs to be. It's really great. Again, based on the iconic film poster painted by Renato Cas Cassero for the 1982 fantastic epic Conan the Barbarian, Conan and Valeria are brought to life in this two-figure statue. Really well done. There's not really that many pictures, unfortunately, but the pictures that we have really showcase. Oh, right here. The Mesco statue, uh, Static 6, Conan the Barbarian, features two figure statues approximately 25 inches tall from base to the top. Of course, the 25 inches is counting to the tip of the sword. Uh, from base to the top of the Atlantean sword, hand painted, hyper realistic detailing. Now, the hair looks a little bit stiff, but of course, they kind of going by that poster. Very nice detail there, as you can see. Man, trying to get those pictures. Not all. It kicks me out. Look at that. Very nice sculpt right there. Looks really great. The detail, the paint job. Very nice. I don't see any mixed media. I think it's just fully sculpted. Very well done. Very nice job for sure. So yeah, this is definitely one that um, Mesco is doing really great with it. All right, look at this one right here. Very nice angle too. And this is kind of gives you an idea of the scale by the size on this proportion 25 tall. It is a really nice depiction for sure. They did a really nice job with it. Uh, this is uh, the item. Uh, it's, it's a free shipping within the United States, contiguous United States, of course, the continental U.S. Uh, it's really cool. Approximately 11 pounds. Not bad at all. Now, when you look at Conan, as we have seen in the past, the stuff that Mesco has done here, of course, they have done figures and some of those figures have been doing great. I always love this statue. This is one of my favorite statues that they produce which right now is on the wait list, but I seen going for really nice prices. I talk about it when it went out is I think it's a phenomenal depiction of Conan and he has interchangeable portraits. You know, there were some QC issues when he came out. People complain about it. I still think it's a phenomenal depiction of Conan. I think it's a totally different take more based on the comic book by that horse comics for sure. Well, on this one, definitely they going for the look of, you know, in this case from the film. And then, of course, you got this one collecting, which I think is great. This is, of course, based on the. Um, 
the Fraceta art, you know, Fraceta art really looks really great there too. That's just the figure, but definitely they need to do a statue for that. So yeah, I think this is a really nice depiction. This is a nice statue. I think price point is excellent. Uh, three hundred seventy-five dollars. Definitely, they're they're right where it needs to be. And I'm excited to see Mesco again doing the statues, and hopefully they continue on. It's not like they do, you know, um, you know, one-time thing, and they wait for like a couple years to do it again. You know, I wish they kind of concentrate on doing statues. I think there is a big market. I prefer that when Mesco does that than when they're doing their their one twelve figures for sure. All right, so that's what we have here on this one on Mesco. And uh, let's move. I want to go back to SciShow. And then we go into SciShow because I want to take you to... We're going to look at the new stuff. And we're going to look at Iron Studios. Iron Studios, again, producing really cool stuff. And the, the thing I want to cover from Iron Studios is they release... Uh, this, uh, they have an exclusive version. I wasn't expecting it for them to go live with this one. They got the Wolverine versus the Juggernaut 110. Um, they they kind of promote this as a 30th anniversary. It's an Iron Studios exclusive, a SciShow exclusive, only through SciShow's limited edition. They're reliving all the statues that they already did in the past, now as a 110. I did pre-order the Superman versus Doomsday. i seen pictures already circulating of people receiving it, I think, in Brazil. Really looking forward to have that piece in the collection. Um, it looks great. There are some couple of changes that I can see that have been done based on the one six because they and we're gonna cover it once I have it. I'll review it and we will cover it. Um, but this, of course, now they're going for this. You remember the original one six scale of this? There's some changes they have done here and there, but I think it's fantastic and I'm, I'm glad that actually they're doing that. The price is the same as they did with the uh, with Superman versus Doomsday, four hundred dollars. And it looks great. They again, they made some changes. I can see some little changes here, or there on the way the position is on this, of the base, the way they did a couple of things to kind of make it more compact. And of course, the textures have changed in some way. They have to kind of readjust certain things because they're going smaller in dimension, so you cannot really have the same texture as you had before. So there's some sacrifices, but I still think it is a nice diorama. As you can see, Wolverine right there, ready to fight the, you know. <laughs> Juggernaut, it looks really good. Look at the portrait. Very nicely done. I really like the way they did it. I think this is a good one. I've been considering about adding this one to the collection. Um been considering it because I have a lot of stuff still on pre-order. And um I'm not so sure. Uh, it, 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 I, just, I, just, I like it. I like this that they they doing this with these dioramas, which is amazing. That they're going back it's cool i might i might skip it i might not i don't know it's just it's a lot you know it's, it's very nice of course this is gonna it's a more exclusive so i think there's limit there's gonna be limited numbers for this it looks great i think i'm waiting because they're already receiving the, the i want to see how the superman versus doomsday looks once i have it in hand and based on that that will kind of make me feel like if I want to do get this one, uh, to be honest with you, that's what I was thinking. I want to get that one first because I, I I'm still on the fence about certain things. I want to see how well that is in person, the presence and all that. And it, based on that, if that is something that is a good experience there, then might as well, they definitely I'm going to get this one because they still have that one on sale at SciShow. They still have it. So it still give me enough time for one well, until I get that one. And it seems that people are receiving it. So that means that it's coming very soon. So we'll see. Uh, I still like it and I am glad that Iron Studios is thinking out of the box, you know, outside the box and in this type of things. And they're actually trying to use some of the stuff they already created, but bringing it in a more affordable version, but also in a more manageable size stuff. It's scale that really helps everyone um, that actually is limited with space. In my case, I am very limited with space, so I definitely need the help. And this is, you know, because I cannot continue adding. It's hard for me to justify keep adding stuff when I don't have the space. You know, I have the battle with my wife already and I don't want to get through that again. I don't want to go through that, you know, with her, you know, hey, you have to keep, you know, you have to be honest. I try to be honest here. You know, one thing, one of the biggest challenges that you have as a collector is that trying to deal with a lot of the issues that come with it. And one of them is, you know, with family in the sense, you know, if you have a spouse, you know, a lot of decisions that you make, particularly financial decisions, you have to share that. 
you know, this is my hobby. She's just been respectful of my hobby for many, many years. But uh, I sometimes I agree that I do take it overboard with the stuff I do. And I have a lot of stuff from pre-order, a lot of stuff that I buy. So I have to be very careful on that. Uh, so I try to make some of those choices. I, I've been thinking about getting rid of some stuff to open the door for other stuff. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to get let go of certain things. You know, I just don't want to let go. But we'll see. But I think it's great um, as a 110. It looks fantastic. You know, I would say I have my I remember when the one six came out. There were a couple of things that I didn't like about that one. And I feel that in some way it feels that they are kind of perfecting some of it here. We'll see. And we'll make the comparison when the time comes. Let's see. Let, let, like, let me give you an idea that I have you here. Wolverine. Maybe we can see it versus Juggernaut. Um, Iron Studios. Maybe we can see that one. Yeah, right there. You can see that one. This is the the this is the original here. This is the original that came out, and this is back back 2017, as you can see right here. So, as you can see, there were changes. The biggest change is the way they're doing. Like for example, when you compare this with uh, Wolverine here, for example, let's see. One of the changes here, of course, is the way he is positioned here. Here's more like a standing is the ground and Wolverine's kind of jumping. It's, it's a really nice depiction and the colors are different. Even the paint job with this one, they go on into more of an action. Definitely the paint job is more modern too. There's some changes even on the scope I can see now. Uh, of course, the boot, the position of the boot is very different. It's a bit more dynamic. And I would say that the position that they actually have Wolverine, I prefer the way they do it, the way they look in eye to eye. I do prefer it from the, this one here, where I feel that they actually, they kind of looking down in some way. Oh, Juggernaut is looking down. So I feel that in some way they did perfect it, some of the things and they improved them on the 110. As you can see right here, there were some improvements for sure. And I do like the feel that it, it feels more dynamic on the 110. Although I do like the classic colors that appear on the 16. So I, again, you know, they make changes to, they make adjustment. That one came also with an interchangeable portrait, something that the 110 doesn't have. So yeah, there's a couple of things that they actually making some adjustments. I do like some of the, the way they're doing it. So it's not the same sculpt that has been minimized. It is the same in some way, but they have tweaked it in some ways to make it look a bit different, which I'm all for it. It's fine. And it looks great. This is actually the original artist. This is the art station of the person who did this. Here you can see the art station. The Victor Hugo Sosa. This is the sculptor for Iron Studios, one of the sculptors. Okay, so we don't have it. So this is tech gives you an idea. He's kind of looking down. He's looking at his face, but Jordan is looking down. They, I think in my, in my opinion, they improve it on this new sculpt again, because now, as you can see, they're both looking at each other. And that feels that that gives more of a battle tone. So yeah, I think that there's a couple of things. I do like the colors on the other one. I do like that actually Juggernaut, it seems that he's actually moving instead of just being standing there. It feels more dynamic, you know, in my opinion. So the 110, but I think they both have some pluses and they both have some, um, you know, negatives. It's just a matter of perspective. Hey, what's up, Louie? How you doing? Thank you for stopping by, my friend. I appreciate it. All right, so let me take you now that we're on this. Let's go to another Iron Studios also release. And but they only have it at their their, their website. Here you have they have like they have this up to 40% off here on the X-Men week. So if you're into a lot of this stuff, they have some cool stuff for for sale. So I would say just go for it. Because you always get this all this junk that of course, so you come to the Iron Studios Direct website, they do have, let's look at the pre-orders here. Let me see if we can go back. That Minister Snow looks good. 
So I don't see it. But here we go to the pre-orders. I want to talk about... Um, let's see. They don't have it here. Oh, right there. This right here. They have this week, this one, completely sold out. Completely sold out. This is a quarter scale legacy. This is the digital, digital pre-order. So that means that what you see is technically the digital rendition of the Statue of the Arts in Santa uh, da Silva. This is, for those who are unfamiliar with uh, F1 Formula, well, Formula 1, he one of the most recognized Brazilian drivers of all time. He is an icon in Brazil. He was an icon, I remember, as a kid, as an older, even... Uh, not as a kid, I think I was older, a bit older. I used to like to watch racing, and I remember his name. He was very popular. And Arjun Senna, it's definitely a legend. Uh, not only for Brazil, but also for Formula One. So they have this one this week. Completely sold out. It was uh, $799, $800 for the statue. And as you can see, it's sold out. Now, pictures are hard to pick here, so... Forgive me if I don't get to it, but let's see if we can do it at Facebook. Facebook. Uh, Aaron Studios. So definitely this is one that uh, they were promoting. Of course, it's only available through them. It's, it's a very limited thing. Here you can see they have arts. And, um, I don't know if they had it there. Maybe there was some... I'm not sure they had it on their Facebook. Okay. Doesn't matter. Uh, we are here at the website. And I am going to open the image. To give you an idea. Again, this is a rendition. This is a digital rendition of how the statue is going to look. Very nice rendition of the, the driver. Here you can see. an idea of how it's going to look very classic design as you can see right there with the base the signature uh when he lived of course the time his career the brazilian flag very cool now you can remove the flag very cool another angle I think the flag is a nice touch and it's nice that they are doing this and I would say at the end of the day one thing I would say about Iron Studios and I think it's uh, really great hey what's up squad captain I'm doing good my friend thanks for stopping by always a pleasure to have you but what I would say is that um, what I would I, I really love about Iron Studios is that they're very proud of being Brazilian. You know, like, you know, a lot of companies, you know, a lot of companies, of course, I think everyone is proud of who they are, you know, but a lot of companies, they take that to the extreme in the sense, not to the extreme, but a lot of companies, they understand their position. They're like in Latin America, there's not, there's so many great artists, you know, like so many sculptors like SciShow. The vast majority of the artists, a great number of the artists that work there, the best artists that they have. Not, not I'm saying all of them, because there's some great American artists there too, from all the parts of the world. But they, they, the, the stars right now has been the Argentinians, the Argentine artists have been phenomenal over the years, and they've been to, the the foundation for years of SciShow, even from the beginning. Uh, but of course, you know, SciShow is not a, an Argentinian company, but they have made a lot of you know, of that success with Argentinian artists and Iron Studios. I like the fact that they understand that as a company, they not only represent, you know, a company that is only selling products to the public, but also they, they are Brazilian and they take care of that Brazilian market because they also products that actually are for the Brazilian market. So they understand their position. And I think that it's appreciated and it's nice to see companies in Latin America. Brazilian is part of it too. Uh, to really su they're succeeding and they are very successful the way they are. So I would say kudos to them. Um, you know, I wish more other companies 
in Latin America would have the same success as Art Studios. But definitely they've been doing it and they, they're doing fantastic. They do fantastic work. And it's super cool to really see them doing this. It's an idea. I don't think that is just a digital rendition. Yeah, it's all it is. It's not him, but it's digital rendition there. And it's got to give you an idea of the scale. So, you know, as a, as a Latino, as a Hispanic man, as a person, um, you know, we have roots in Latin America for sure. I definitely see it as a win and I'm glad for them. And I, you know, it's good that they not only representing the statue world, but they're representing their nation and they're doing it with a lot of pride. And they're actually bringing those characters um, that are important for Latin Americans too. So it's great. You know, Iron Studios is a great company and um, it's cool that they are doing that and they take pride of what they're doing and they're fantastic. So kudos to them for what they're doing. All right, so this is what we're covering today for Iron Studios. Let's move on. And I want to move on now to Spec Fiction once again because I want to cover now the new re, uh, release. So we are on the quarter scale already. We were going to talk about this. This is the Demon Slayer Netsuko. Uh, this is for Infinity Studio. Infinity Studio does amazing work for sure, Buzz, all that kind of thing. But they also do quarter scale stuff, you know, for animation and Demon Slayer, something that they've been doing. This is $1,200. This is expensive. And I will tell you that I find it a bit busy. Um, some people may like it. I just find that all this is very distracting. It has a light of feature. You know, I'm not necessarily a big Demon Slayer fan. I'm not necessarily a big fan of a lot of anime in recent years. Not because I'm not a fan, just because I don't watch it much. I don't have time to watch a lot of the stuff like I used to do back in the day. But uh, I think it's it's kind of interesting. I like the colors. It's very colorful. I like that this interaction of light of features that is something that we see in more and more companies are really in Asia doing very bold light of features on their statues, which is good. I just wish I could see the character more instead of seeing all this power. I'm not sure if this is removable. I don't think it is, but I feel that all the power kind of steals all that extra parts kind of take away some of the view and I wish they were removable. I'm not sure they are. They don't, I know they don't seem to be removable. So, um, yeah, there's different portraits I can see. And from different angles, you can see the court, the, the, the sculpt a lot better. But again, it feels busy. It looks busy. And uh, it's kind of cool, though. I'm not going to deny it. I like the the translucent material that is used there. Definitely different portraits. Interchangeable. And definitely this is for the fans. Cool light out feature. Is that a pain? It kind of looks like translucent in the dark. Maybe it's going to be kind of creepy and scary. It does have its moments. Like here, you can see the dimensions as a quarter scale. Definitely, this is for the hardcore fan. But um, yeah, I found it a bit busy. And sometimes a lot of the anime stuff is very busy. Uh, but sometimes some companies are able to kind of position things in a way that is is not intrusive, and it doesn't look like it's covering. Because right there, you you can really see her portrait. It's kind of it's covering her face a lot. You only see the eyes, and sometimes it feels that you can't even see the body. So yeah, that's the only complaint that I would have about this one. Overall, and I think for the it's expensive, you know, but of course that's what Infinity Studio has kind of been doing lately. And I kind of give you an idea what Infinity Studio has been doing lately. Let's go there. Of course, when they do those boss, they're amazing. You know, the silicone stuff, but they've been doing all different statues for all different things. They even have the Fast and Furious 7 Hub Squatter Scale statue, which <laughs> that came out of nowhere. They have the Fast 5 Giselle, although I think the portrait is doesn't look like Giselle in some way, but they have all these different statues. Definitely. This is a company that is experimenting with a lot of different franchises and uh, definitely they they're doing something, you know, like if it is a company that I, in my opinion, we need to keep an eye on because, uh, you know, they started really strong, of course, with their bus stuff, but uh, they've been moving away from that into the anime and they've been doing a lot of different things, a lot of action stuff, different franchises. And I, it seems that they are really kind of, catching a big number of collectors, the attention of collectors uh, at this one. It's not a bad piece. The one that we just talked today, I just found it a bit too busy and uh, it needs to be cleaned out a bit. In my opinion, cleaner will have been better because sometimes less is more. That's something that we all know. We always said less is more. It looks better like that. For example, this other character also from Demon Slayer, just to give you an idea, this one, that's another that they produce there. I like the position of his power behind him in some way. It gives more clarity of his. You can see him better. The lot of features there. 
but I don't, you don't see that power being intrusive in front of him. So they managed to display it in a way that actually looks better in my opinion. So it, it, it's a cleaner look. So yeah, when you compare one thing, you, you can see that it's a cleaner look. Something that this piece that we just covered today, um, it feels that don't have. So some of that stuff is loose, is, is lost in translation. So uh, yeah, I found it busy, but you know, appreciate the concept. It just needs to be worked on and improved for sure. But that is yeah, something that I have no power to, to change. That's something that the company would have to do. But uh, yeah, that's just my opinion on that one. All right, so we're covering now Infinity Studio. And now I want to move, I want to move another here in Spec Fiction that we're going to be here uh, with the quarter scale stuff. I want to take you to look at a new piece. This is from Way Studios. Right here, this Tekaman Blade quarter scale. I love Tekaman, one of my favorite things. I was thinking about, uh, when I think about Tekaman, lately I've been thinking about, for example, the... Tatsunoko versus Capcom video game that was on the Wii that in my opinion it should need it needs to be uh transfer uh, it wasn't exclusive for the Wii I don't know why they don't bring it to the Switch but it would be great if they're able to bring it to modern consoles that is a fantastic game a modern version it was it's a fantastic fighting game I would love to see a remaster of that game but Tekken Man is one of the characters there and uh this one comes with Lido features Wii Studio is doing really amazing work here this is a very nice the base seems a bit busy but i think it works well with take man the lido feature i love the paint job you can see some of the battle damage in his armor looks great but those lido features in his helmet and his shoulders really nice touch and definitely he's been through battle through hill and back now you can see the scale difference with this girl i think it's a nice pose again the there's missiles, there's some explosions. Now, I would say that the way they did the explosions here, um, I hate when they, they look like that. They look like foam rather than looking like an explosion. So something that maybe they could have done with more translucent, um, even with, you know, like some type of translucent resin or something that looks more like an explosion. It, it just never, never really works so well for me, at least in my view. When they do that smoke effect all of that sometimes it does even with this missile here there's a smoke effect it, it just doesn't look right it, like i don't know it's just something that i'm not necessarily a fan so the base needs work the sculpt of the character is great and the light of feature is excellent really nice touch paint job on him is really great and the damage the detail even I like the sim, the, the name of the character there. Some people don't like them there. Some people don't like to have the logos on the bases. I don't have an issue with it. I'm not, it doesn't bother me. It's cool in my opinion. Now to give you an idea of what Way Studios has been doing here, we have talked about it, a couple of things there. Of course, last week we talked about this Mighty Morphin Power Rangers bus, but yeah, they're, they, they're really concentrating on some of the other things, but this Tekken man, in my opinion, that's just going into the Tatsunoko line. And I think that, um, it looks great. It looks great. So yeah, another company that is really kind of sticking to the anime stuff, manga stuff, although also they do Pacific Rim and all that. And definitely they're doing some cool stuff that you we need to keep an eye on. So yeah, that's great. So that is great from this company in, uh, in this case. Um, now let me take you now. We're going to look, we're going to prime one studio. Prime One Studio has been kind of quiet lately. We don't know when they're going to do their presentation. It could happen any given day. They can just tell. I know they're going to let us know, but I'm not sure when, if that is the plan. But this week, they release this Harley Quinn. There's also available at SciShow. You can get it at SciShow and other places. Harley Quinn, this is the deluxe version. They also have the regular version. And on this one... Harley Quinn, uh, deluxe bonus version, regular is fourteen hundred dollars for the deluxe. The regular version is eleven hundred. So for two hundred dollars, you get more. And the concept design by Stan Stanley R. Jim Lau. This is something that when we saw what was it? Not last year, but the year before. Hey, late night trip. How you doing, my friend? They're doing some good work. Yeah, I know. They're, this company, 
definitely it's a company there are a lot of companies that we have to keep an eye on because a lot of companies are doing new things and they i think they are trendsetters they're companies that they're really changing the way things we we see but here you can see harley quinn the bonus part on this piece um this is the portrait limited to 500 pieces just for the portrait for this one kind of cool looking sorry i still have a little bit of phlegm from dealing with dealing with that um <clears throat> but here i think the bonus part is fine it's not like a deal breaker for me it looks too clean or it's, it's all right not necessarily my favorite one now i see that she has a cyber leg that is cool it is a great addition and yeah you know from a collectible standpoint having the exclusive the bonus part it gives more value to your collectible if for some reason you decide to sell you have something that is more valuable than anything else so it's not a consideration that you have to take when you buy something that if you at some point you're going to get rid of then you have something that has value i think they will be more valuable <clears throat> But in my opinion, the regular portraits are pro probably the way to go for this one. I think they're fantastic in there, the way they are. I love the hyena right there, the you know the cyberpunk style hyena with the you know the the arms, all that. The baby hyena too. It's cool. The Lido features that he has on the base are great, and that portrait I think is is very cool. It's a very different design. And I would say, you know, I'm more of a classic Harley Quinn. I'm more a classic for every character. But I can really take that this is for people who are like different things. This is not for everyone. This is for people that like, maybe they're fans of Harley Quinn. They only collect Harley Quinn stuff and they want to add this. People who, who like things are different. People who are not even comic book readers, but they like the character it, her, itself or the character herself. And they're doing something like this. And I think that that's where this is a very unique take. And this is more of a, the, the touch for the the, the the cyberpunk face portrait that actually fits more of the what they're trying to do. Although I like this one a lot more. I like this one, but the one with showing the tongue, definitely this is one. So they have actually, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five different portraits comes with this one. That's a lot of portraits. Five different portraits. If you get the bonus in, you get six portraits. I think that is a lot. It comes again with the LED illumination in the base. You have some different details to go alongside. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of different things with this Harley Quinn here. You can see the different accessories that she can wear, the glasses. The, the, the earrings, I think those are earrings, if I'm not mistaken. There are a couple of things or some things that you can, the light of feature, the way they set it up. Yeah, look at the different portraits. I, the symbols on the back, I guess. The, the scale of this, a quarter scale, but it's going to be very tall because that base is a platform that is really tall. This is a fun portrait. Definitely kind of fits the, the style, what they're trying to achieve here. And I like the way they have the little stands for the portraits. Something that uh, I like the, the way they, they, the Primal Studios can always considers that. Not just because that's another thing that sometimes when you have all these portraits and put them away or you want to keep them close. Like I like to have my portraits right next to my statues so I can change them. I don't know. Some people like to put them away. They put them away, whether they keep them in the box or they, they have like a, you know, it could be uh you know pack a box or you know even a uh i don't know any place in the house or sometimes they even use this i forgot the name of this 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 the even the gun cases a case or something where with foam inside or sometimes they even have uh, a drawer where they keep all the stuff i don't like to have it like that because out of mind, out of sight, sometimes I like to change things. If I have a different things to change out, sometimes I like to keep them together. But you have to kind of lay them there. And sometimes that's very, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look good for some for most. And second, it's very unsafe for the things because something can happen. You can bump them by mistake and they can break, whatever. So I don't like it. So I think when the Aristos give you the little stands for the portraits, that is very cool, very unique. And then you can simply grab it and change them. And you still preserve the quality of your stuff. I think that that's something that Primal Studio does. I wish other companies would think the same way when they're doing it. And some companies do. You know, like even the, uh, what was that? Um, 
Eric Sosa's company, Prototype C, was giving you the little stands for the bus for the interchangeable parts. I like that. And some companies do from time to time. But that is not a common practice. But that's something that uh, uh, Prime One Studio does. And I like that they do it. Cool. There's a lot of pictures. 195 pictures here. So, like, man, we're going to go as fast. Okay. So, this is the, the symbol. Forgive me. I don't read Japanese. So I don't know exactly what it means. But you can chain a couple of things there. Symbols there. Oh, that is cool. So that is magnetic. I, I suppose I, I think it is now looking at the portrait, the more classic portrait. It's fine on the bonus. So people might like this even more because of the bonus part, because of the more classic look. And actually, it's not bad now that I think of it. And again, like I mentioned earlier, if you, you know, if you want the, the ultimate thing, then you go for the bonus because in the end, that's what also the one that has the extra portrait, but also the ones that gives you the more bang for your buck, at least some value if you have to get rid of it. So yeah, there's a lot of pictures. I'm not gonna, I'm going fast now. Maybe I can cover it. I can see anything different, different angles. I like her hand. Like she's doing the symbol. Some people kind of dislike that symbol. <laughs> they say that that's a sign of the devil, but it's my. You know, it's more like the sign of love too. So, um, you know, it, everybody's a bit weird about a lot of everything. Everybody looks for a second meaning in everything. And I'm not the type of person, you know, at the end of the day, there's meaning in a lot of things, but it depends how you express the meaning. But yeah, I like it. Nice pictures. Uh, again, Prime One Studio, always a killer with the pictures. They're phenomenal. They do a lot of Photoshop too, but they do great job in selling the product. And at the end of the day, it's about selling the product. So something that other companies need to do better. Um, some of the companies that we cover here, the pictures are fine, but some of the pictures, I think they, they lose a lot of detail, but Prime One Studio is gets up close and all the different angles. So you can see all the detail. And at the end of the day, that's how you want to sell it. You want to see the detail, the small stuff. And with Prime One Studio going through the pictures, you can find all the little thing, all the little things that really matter to collectors here. You can see this one very nice glasses. So it's cool. So yeah, Prime One Studio again, company that definitely, definitely, it's always doing something amazing. Fourteen hundred dollars, expensive, definitely. You can order through SciShow. Um, no, I don't know how many, how much reception is going to have. Uh, the edition size is four hundred pieces for the bonus version. Uh, for the regular version, it's still to be, you know, announced. Uh, they haven't decided, but the fact that they go for 100 pieces, it tells me, which is a big number, that um, a Prime One Studio is banking on the popularity of the character and the the reception and perhaps in the history that they have selling the character. They probably they do sell well. We'll see. It's still it's a guy number, but not a bad number for an exclusive. So we'll see what happens. But here you have Blade Runner type. Okay, I like the cyberpunk style, that futuristic, the fifth element, Blade Runner type, rock and roll. <laughs> yes, you're right on that, my friend. What is the target audience for this? And I imagine that we're looking at... Um... What's up, Batman? Okay, uh, Cypher, say so what's the target audience? I think the target audience for this um, Harley Quinn is definitely not the comic book fan. The target audience is definitely the people who love our germ Lao first and foremost, which is a lot of people in Asia. Definitely the market is in Asia. The desire is to sell in Asia. And I think they're going to do it for people who love Harley Quinn. And I think Harley Quinn sells. So, you know, it's very different, very unique. And I will tell you one thing. And I, I, I got to speak from my perspective. Um, from all my videos, I remember when I did the presentation of this show uh, last year. Uh, if, if I go back, for example, to my channel, let's see, uh, JP Sour reviews. So let's see JP Sour. I kind of give you an idea here. JP Sour reviews. I made a video or something, or I did hardly. I'm going to give you something in a moment. Just, just bear with me while I'm doing this. You know, here are my reaction videos that I used to do. I don't do anymore. Unfortunately, I should go back at some point, but I don't have time. That's why I do this. Look at this one. This is the reveal of this. This is what happened a year ago on the showcase number four. There is 1.1 thousand views just for that particular one. 
And I'm telling you, some of the stuff that I did on that particular date, many of those views, many of them, they didn't get much views. But this is one of the most popular. And I think the algorithm, of course, pushed that video for a thousand views just for that, which was an excerpt of that the, the Prime One Studio Next Level Showcase for. And that video took a lot of people, a lot of views. Here you can see a lot of my 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 videos that I've done over the years, some of them. Uh, but you know, that that kind of gives you an idea uh of how popular um people there is a market for it. People are interested. They knew, they saw the picture and said, oh, that's Harley Quinn. I think it's just, the concept is different. Um, it's not for everyone, but I think in the end, I think they're banking that someone is going to kind of buy it. Are they going to do it? I don't know. Uh, only time can tell. Uh, it can be um, in the end cancel if it doesn't do well. We'll, well, well. Time can tell. I think there is a market, but don't quote me on that because I'm not an expert. You know, it may be a market. They may not have a market. They may have people interested and they may have people that are actually not interested. They like the concept, but it doesn't mean that they're going to buy. They're not going to, you know, take the bait, but we'll see. Uh, and the other day it's a gamble, but Harley Quinn and our gym loud combined and cyberpunk. There's a, you know, there's a market there. I think it's a very young market. Uh, it's for young people rather than older people. My generation, I think it's more for like the younger crowd who has a lot of money and probably not much common sense and don't even read comics. So. There's the audience that might go for it, but people in my in my age group, which is people in their 40s, definitely there's no market there. I don't think there is, but of course I can be wrong. I could be wrong. All right, so that was what we have from Prime One Studio. Oh, that is cool. All right, my friends, um, I'm gonna take one last break, just one last break because I I want to come back strong. Yeah, we already covered a good number of companies. I appreciate that you you stuck with me. Uh, but I want to come back. Uh, I want to just take another a break, probably take the dog out. And I want to cover when I get back, I want to talk about SciShow. I want to concentrate on SciShow. We're going to talk about the Batman versus the Joker Eternal enemies. I want to talk about the Fastball Special Colossus and Wolverine. And then, of course, we're going to look at PCS. They have Sangif and Gen uh, 110. This is for Street Fighter, Underworld, Evolution, Marcus. And ultimately, I want to talk about Queen Studios Hulk. So we have a few, uh, we have the big hitters of the night. So um, stay with me. Just uh, give me a couple of minutes and I'll be back. And uh, we'll cover the rest. But I want to say thank you very much for, for your support and for watching and for staying here in the conversation. I'll see you in just a moment.
all right guys thank you for giving me that time i just took the dog out um he actually wanted to come back in like right away he was like okay i'm done so it's so, okay let's go <laughs> sometimes he likes to be roaming around whatever but sometimes he's just down to business so that was easy uh and now we're coming back to the last stretch of this video again i want to say thank you to all for really spending time with me on saturday night and normally i do a friday but you know saturday you know thank you yesterday i wasn't feeling great i still haven't decided if i want to do this saturday or sunday or whatever even i thought about sunday but i don't want to just be late on sunday when i have to get ready for work on monday so saturday possibly i don't know you let me know what you think if friday is better than saturday or what is the day that you actually feel more comfortable um normally get more views on friday for sure saturday perhaps people are watching tv or playing video games so, you know they're not really hanging out so much but you never know but actually i have more energy to do things and i can cover a lot more you know i'm still trying to experiment i wish i could go back to make videos daily or doing stuff like that reactions but um, my time is limited and there's so many things that, you know, I am responsible now in life and got to take care of. So it's just not as simple as, you know, it was. But you never know. Time, things change. We're not always there. So live video has become like a lifeline for me to be able to talk about the things that I have a connection, which is collectibles. Talk about the, the fun stuff, the geeky stuff. And thank you. Thank you for actually giving me the opportunity to talk. Hey, yes, friend. And thank you to you, too. To all of you, appreciate it. Um, cheers to everyone. Cheers to everyone. All right, so let's do and talk about the next thing. And again, like I mentioned, we're going to cover now SciShow Collectibles. SciShow, um, definitely keep killing it. Let me go back here. We are at the SciShow page. And I'm going to take you to... Let's see right there as you can see they got different versions of the cyberpunk thing here as we were talking about uh the lux bonus the lux version i don't know why the difference of prices is so high so people were pointing that out that there was a big gap a difference on the the, on the bonus version for like 300 dollars in comparison i think they it was even more steep than ordering directly from the website but from from prime one studio all right so i'm going to cover now I was thinking about doing SciShow. But now I think I'm going to go for... Normally I'd like to go for it by scales. But let's do... No, actually, let's, let, let's do it like that. Let's go for SciShow. Let's, let's talk about SciShow. I think that we are doing it the right way. All right, so here is the Batman versus the Joker Eternal Enemy Squatter Scale Statue. This is... They promoted it as the first quarter scale diorama done by SciShow. I think they've been kind of, it's kind of like a gray area. They have done others within the kind of quarter scale, kind of one fifth scale. But for all things and purposes, this is the first DC quarter scale diorama. Uh, two pieces in one, kind of in, in the vein of what Prime Ones has done. And there's the different versions. Of course, they got the exclusive. We're going to look at the exclusive here because it's the same price and there's a time release. So that means that you only have one more week to pre-order this one. The exclusive edition comes with a team name plates as Batman, Batman versus the Joker. So you got this little plate. Uh, you want to have that extra thing. If not, you go for the collector's edition. The exclusive is to be disclosed. I think it depends on how many pre-orders they get. That's how they're going to determine that. The collector's edition, of course, that one, it's going to be more available, you know, they don't have also an edition size. Uh, this picture is kind of nice. Of course, he can see Daniel Bell. And here you can see the uh, pretty much the father of everyone. <laughs> the one that really has done everything in order to sustain this, this hobby for sure. That Let's look at the exclusive fur. Here on the exclusive, you can see um, it's a pretty cool depiction. Oh, before we get into it, let me kind of look at some of the details here. Maybe we can give you, of course, again, the price again is a thousand dollars. I think for what they're producing here is fine. Let's always like to give the honor to the people involved here. Normally, um, I enjoy it. So you got Martin Canale. He actually did the sculpt. He also designed this piece. Uh, 
Martin Canale, of course, is the forefather here. The guy that actually technically gave the uh, make Sideshow the the monumental company it is now with statues. It was his original sculpts. Then Daniel Bell, of course, he's his brother Jay, the person that he get trained now. Of course, he's technically he has grown so much. Daniel Bell is amazing now. They're both actually sculpted and designed this. Uh, then we have Jorge Villar. Now, uh, Jorge, as far as I know, he did, uh, and Claudio, I think Jorge did, I'm not sure exactly how they separated. I think I saw the video and they were talking about each person did something. Uh, Claudio did some of the score. I think he did the base or some of the parts in the base. I think Jorge did the base or Claudio did some of the details and the other ac accessories. The Martin, I think did, uh, Martin did actually Batman. No, Martin did the Joker, if I'm not mistaken, and Daniel did Batman. So they all kind of shared the work and they did it all together. Richard Long, a designer, of course, he's always been involved with the, the, the sketches here. Bernardo Esquivel is always a phenomenal painter. He did the job, designed the, the social design development is all involved in the whole thing. Now, I will tell you one thing. Now, outside of the formalities here, it is a very large piece. And that... Of course, this is the exclusive. Looks great. Nice touch. I would say one thing that I did mention uh, last time and that I found it to be a bit busy. I do find it busy. Uh, and this is something perhaps because I'm not accustomed to it because SciShow has always been a more cleaner look. This is something that you see more with Prime One Studio. Uh, and I think that they, they're trying to go something different. Now, of course, the, the, the one that we have, the, the same drama that the, the Prime One Studio did with the Joker. This is a very similar concept to that one, which in so many ways it feels like, okay, now one is copying the other. And of course, uh, definitely Prime One Studio, and we have talked about it many, many times here on this channel. Prime One Studio definitely is a, a trendsetter. It's a company that is really has become the company to, to the, that actually the, the company that it's the goal to achieve. And I feel that SciShow is trying to kind of match the same level of energy of Prime One. Although I think Prime One Studio, uh, you know, la, um, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the stuff they've been doing last year, they I don't feel that they were as, as you know, as involved or like, since they did the last showcase, it's been kind of quiet. Prime One has been releasing this stuff, but we haven't really seen it much. This year started very strong with SciShow. SciShow, I think since the, the end of last year and this year, they've been kind of pumping releases. They're doing a lot of different things since the 12 days of SciShow. They've been showcasing a lot of stuff. They are getting pre-orders. They're releasing a lot of teasers, the stuff that they didn't showcase there. They have so much stuff, which is amazing. I think SciShow is taking no prisoners right now. I think this year they're coming strong and they're acting like we're going to take this market because we are the trendsetters. You know, they definitely they were for many years. So um, I think with this Batman, they go into that direction. Although this feels more like a uh, from the playbook of Prime One Studio, in my opinion. I found it busy. Now the Batman sculpt is fascinating. It's really great. Definitely a side show. Uh, you can see Daniel Bell all the way. With the Joker, you can see definitely uh, Martin Canale. He he that you know they, he knows how to make Jokers for sure. I love his Joker depictions and. I think it's great. Yeah, again, the base has a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of little details there. And that definitely makes it a little busy. But of course, they've been into this fight, you know, like Batman is all bloody. Uh, and of course, the Joker too. It's a really fight. It's a fight. This is a different story. Not for everyone. You got the alternate Joker hand holding gun <laughs> with the punch thing and the fish. I don't know how they're able to kind of pull off the gun thing and showcasing it here while other companies are struggling to showcase guns. I don't know how. Uh, DC is kind of funky, but Saisha's been having a relationship with DC for a long time. But like even the flame that happens in his cape, that is different. Not necessarily. I will tell you, not I, it, it's not needed in my opinion. It's just more detail that has been added. Um, some of that extra detail, I think that it's just too much in my opinion. They couldn't go cleaner with that and i think people would have appreciated it even more um yeah there's a lot of stuff happening around them with all the little cards and the smoke the gas of course the laughing gas and the smoke of the laughing gas of course and the broken wood there's a lot of things now the paint job esquivel again a master of his craft really cool here you can see a different other angles 
great detail. And of course, the cars, you know, they've been hurting him. So there's blood in there. It's a little bit bloody for sure. And again, something that I mentioned before, when uh, Saisha does flames, they go for this more like solid polystone that I'm just not a fan of. I wish it was more translucent. They, they use more like polyurethane or something like that. A clear resin, perhaps, or even just PVC. It looks better than this because, yeah, it, it doesn't look all that on the prototype. You know it's not going to look that great even on the final product. So that's one thing that I'm necessarily not a fan of. It's, it's, it's a different concept. You know, this is one thing, but to me, this is not the ultimate depiction of Batman of the Joker. So I don't feel that this is one that um, ultimately people are going to gravitate saying, okay, this is the most have. It is not a must have, but definitely it's one that is unique. A lot of people love the concept. It's having two pieces in one for the price, you know, that they have. It's, it's not bad. It's a very dynamic pose uh, and it's very unique, very sideshow in some way, in some way, at least on the sculpt side. But on the team, on the detail, on the whole diorama depiction, on the whole like take no prisoners type of style, definitely they're taking this from the you know from a Prime One Studio playbook. They're really copying Prime One Studio, no doubt about it. But I think Prime One Studio, in my opinion, has done it better. And I'll give you an idea right here. Let's go um, just to give you a concept. Prime One Studio right here. Let's look at Batman versus the Joker. Okay, so I don't see one here. Maybe. It's going to be like a ton of them coming out, but let's see. Unless he was canceled. Which I don't think it was. Right there. They have it in low stock. This is a finale piece. I seen the people picture the pictures of this one. Of course, this is a lot more expensive. And of course, it's uh the scale on this one. Trying to remember, this is a uh, only 250 pieces. That's uh, super limited for sure. And was this a one third? Yeah, one third. So this is a super large piece. But in my opinion, this was a much better. It's a different angle, but uh, of course, you, you get more space on that one third to do the whole thing. I do like this one a lot more. And that Joker, but I do definitely like the portrait of the Joker on this side. I think the side show depiction there is. But the whole, you know, tank thing, the whole concept, the whole portrait. I do like this. Of course, the way it, it, it just it's a great piece. No doubt. But of course, it's a one third, super huge, super large, not for everyone. Very nice concept. And of course, SciShow, of course, kind of took some of that playbook and they went with a little more the a smaller version that definitely on a more affordable price. And it's still a very nice depiction. But I find I found that this one, even with all the details that the Prime one has, I still find it that it's more tame in the colors and it feels more um, that I can see the detail a lot better. That I can see it, not because it's bigger. And you, I love the the way they did the acid with that kind of translucent resin. It looks great. And I feel that I can see the detail a lot more. It's more clearer. It's more uh, because definitely there's a lot of a lot of bright colors. I think there's the the there's only the yellow on this, of course, on the gun part, on the green, and it's just that. And everything is a lot of darkness, like dark colors and. Some of those highlights and you see the dynamite around there. So there's detail, but it's more tame and more control. I feel that this is more free fall. Like there's a lot of bright colors where there is the bright orange and the bright green. And there's a lot of things all over that doesn't really look as clear, at least in my perspective. But I, I'm sure that someone will find a way. Now, again, not saying that this is a bad piece. I think the scope is phenomenal. Uh, I, I like Esquivel's paint jobs. Like he's a great painter. I'm not denying that. Uh, I just find the whole concept a little bit busy and a couple of things that could improve. But for the price, in comparison to the Prime One Studio, of course, you get in a good deal because that will be like twenty six hundred dollars plus the shipping cost. Here, you're paying a thousand plus shipping costs. Uh, you know, you take your pick. What can you afford? What are you collecting? You're collecting quarter scale or you're collecting a one third scale. It, it's a matter of choice there. All right, let me read some of the comments from we move to the next thing. All right. 
Did you get a chance to watch the roundtable talk between the artists? I did watch some of it. Um, I did not watch it all. Uh, I just watched part. I watched some parts of it, um, but I didn't get the chance. I because I, you know, now with my job, I really don't get the opportunity to do it. And when I get home, I really don't have time to watch a lot of stuff. I try to do other things. Uh, I did watch some segments. Uh, I normally when I drive or when I commute, I might just you know put something and just listen to what they're saying and i think I, that's what i did some element some parts of the, the the table talk of the video that they have which i think is a great thing that saisha is doing that table talk with the asking the artist so i took some hints from the elements i watched part of that video um and it was great i think it's great that saisha is doing that yeah that part one is the big boy uh, I did day one pre-order on the saisha piece congratulations you know you know i'm not here to say that it's bad it's just from the pictures, I wish it, it it looked cleaner. Maybe just the pictures themselves, and uh, but in, in person, it's gonna be different. I think for the price, it's a phenomenal deal, and you get a really nice depiction of these two characters in a battle. It is a a, a diorama. It's something as a quarter skill diorama. Just like Saisho is actually getting into a new direction, and I think that is great that Saisho is actually diving now into this direction, uh, also to to kind of going back to dioramas but also doing dioramas in this case they're catering to the quarter scale crowd which in, in the end is the vast majority or the biggest uh consumer base for for the statues produced by SciShow. um they prefer quarter scale over other scales and you know it's not bad i think it's it, it's great I, again as you mentioned there it's taken from a page of a comic book yeah uh, I think so. Yeah, it's kind of like the concept. It's a fight between them two. Um, it's tall. It's very tall in comparison to other statues because of the whole concept here. Uh, but I like the fact that it's not as wide. And that's the thing with the Prime 1 Studio. That Prime 1 Studio, perhaps, the big, it's a one third, so it's a lot bigger. It's a big boy, and it's a lot wider. So it occupies so much space. With this one, you are more... The only thing that you have to worry is about the height more than that you worry about they are they, in this case the depth of it or even the 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 width or the depth because it's it's all more streamlined everything is uh, in a tube form because it's kind of like a tube a, a cube right here from the top to the bottom so everything fits within so it's cool you know i i like that saisha is definitely trying new things it's, it's always good to see saisha trying new things and i think this year with this 30th anniversary they come in with all the strength they have they come in with a lot of different concepts it's just march and they already have a lot of concepts so what's next we don't even have the big events coming you know of course now that they're no longer going to san diego comic con or even toy fair things like that they're really marketing they are actually kidding the the social media really hard and i feel that every week we've been getting a lot of new things so every every week they, they're just releasing stuff and, and and getting new teasers and stuff which is great in my opinion so yeah i think this is a great one all right let's move to the next sideshow piece and this is the one the most recent one of this week this is the one a lot of people are excited there's two different versions which is even better for a lot of people of the fastball special colossus and wolverine now this is something that is new here too they're trying something else that is different here they go in for the statue, which in this case we knew it was a one fifth. It was announced like that, or it was presented when people asked the question a few months back when we got the teaser with the 12 days of Sash, all of that. People were asking and they were told it was one fifth. All of a sudden now we have a premium format. So now we have a quarter scale. Now there's differences between those two. We're gonna look first at the statue. This is the one we already knew. I think it's great. One fifth scale. I wish it was one sixth, to be honest with you. As a one fifth still doable, uh, I'm not so sure. If it was one six, I would be in trouble because I will definitely be going getting it right away. Uh, there's no exclusive parts here, so I think they're gonna have a big number of this. I do like the concept; it, it's great. The base Colossus looks magnificent, uh, and Wolverine looks terrific. This is something that, in my opinion, is even better than the Batman versus the Joker. Because here you can see the splash page, you know, Wolverine coming out of that splash page and that comic book. And it looks so terrific. It's such a nice concept, to be honest. And of course, again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, there's something that we have seen from many companies over the years doing the comic book background. But Sideshow has never done it. This is the first time they do it. And I think it's great. That Wolverine looks fantastic. You get two prices for you know two pieces for the price of one at $800. I was more afraid that this would be within the $1,000 or more. 
Uh, and I think $800 is more doable. You get into pieces for the price of one again. And uh, the whole concept, the whole diorama base is great. 18 inches tall. It's huge. I love that they went for the classic colors too with the red. When you look at the most recent premium format figure of uh, Colossus, it has a more darker red. Here they went for the more classic red. So And they go with the classic, of course, outfit of Wolverine. I don't want to say the most classic, but the tiger stripe that is a lot of people seem to love the most. And that was inspired on the classic original, the introduction of Wolverine. It looks great. I, the whole thing is great. The whole pose, whoever posed it. And, you know, I skipped one thing. My apologies if I didn't say. Uh, looking at the details here, the people that are involved, because I like to always give credit, and I like this, I should always credit them, is Will Harbottle. Will Harbottle is a phenomenal artist. He does phenomenal. His anatomy is always on point. He knows anatomy. Will knows how to do anatomy the proper way. And, of course, in the design we have, Ivan Koritaka, uh, it's Corey Tariff. That's why I think I pronounce it. Corey Tariff, Rachel Rubisek, designer, Ian McDonald. I know Rian. Ivan and Rachel, I, I don't remember them, but Ian, I know. Then you have Casey Love. Always love Casey Love's paint jobs. I think he's perhaps my favorite painter at SciShow. And of course, the SciShow Design Development team is there. Um, the whole thing. So yeah, they did a, oh my God. They did a really nice job. Again, looking at the different angles. It's so great. Even the background they, they went were like they have on the comic book there. Very cool concept, man. If if this was one six, I will be like priority day one. Now it's a one fifth because I don't really collect one fifth anymore. Years ago I, I used to collect the comic kits. I used to have even the Colossus comic kit from SciShow. I used to love that piece. I sold it many, many, many years ago. Um, probably, I don't remember. It's been that long. It's been, it's been a long time. I think more than 10 years or more. Uh, but here you can see that Wolverine looks great. Casey did a phenomenal job with the paint job. Look at that. That portrait looks phenomenal. Look at the detail in the background. They, they, I love Casey and the way that Casey does the paint jobs. I love that they, he does the, the lines and the, the shading that he adds. It's always on point. It looks so natural, but at the same time, so dynamic. He brings so he, he's really great with his paints. It's, he's phenomenal. If you had never seen Casey Love, I would recommend you to look at the other videos also, uh, that Saisha does look for Casey Love. And one of those presentations when he's talking about his work, I, you, you'd be impressed about what he does and his technique He's great. Now they use the skin size special with the X-Men. Very nice. You know, the, everything they do here is real, super cool. Very nice. Now, the other thing, another factor that you have to point, not necessarily a big fan, again, flames and stuff, there's something that I don't care much about SciShow when they do the flames and the power, they always doesn't look right. For some reason, it's because of the materials. You know, I'm not saying that Casey Love paint did a bad paint job. You work with what you have. He does what he needs to do. I think it's more the choice of the materials that SciShow chooses here. If they use more of the clear resin style thing, it will be even better in my opinion. Now, the only thing here that I would say that I'm not a fan, I'm a fan of the alternate alternate display option that you can remove the comic book and have him just like that. I think it's nice and it's clean. The only thing that I don't like is that the, you can see this, this thing that actually this explosion of this fire or whatever, I think it's something that is coming out of the comic book and you don't have the power to remove it. I think that that's something that I wish this was also removable. It would make it look even cleaner not only to remove the comic book, but to remove this section here with the comic book. Uh, the ex you know, in this case, this smoke or explosion or fire effect, that would be, in my opinion, a better choice. But the statue itself looks cleaner like that. I just don't like it the way it looks like this. It just makes no sense to me because this, in my opinion, is like the explosion coming out of the comic book. That is something that I will point out that I'm not a fan of. Here, with the comic book, it looks okay, fine. Without the comic book, not necessarily a big fan, but you know, at least the statues are great. And definitely that natural pose of Colossus is phenomenal. In my opinion, they look natural. It looks better than any other depiction of this, like the scene that we have seen in the past. Now, when we look at the premium format, I think the price is excellent, not bad. But now when we look at the premium format, now 
this, this is the thing with the premium format. People excited. We were not expecting this to be a quarter scale. People wanted it to be. But the reality is that they, they were, we were told when people asked a few months back when the teaser was given 12 days of SciShow that it would be a one fifth. All of a sudden, SciShow kind of backtracked and now it is released a quarter scale. The only difference is that the quarter scale that they are releasing, and here you can see what I was telling you about the colors. This is the classic red. This is the classic outfit. And this is the more modern depiction of that classic outfit. This is a great Colossus. It's always been. But I think I like this red even more. This is the classic red. This is the classic John Byrne style. Well, not necessarily John Byrne, of course. Uh, Dave Cacheron did the design, but John Byrne kind of follow it. And here's the other Wolverine, which in my opinion is, is not, I've never been a fan of. I'm uh, not because it's not a bad skull, but just I don't like the, uh, you know, the outfits are more modern. So this is a more modern. This is the what we're going for the classic. Now, the only thing that this doesn't have, and this is a bummer for a lot of people, it's a quarter scale. People are excited for that. It doesn't have the comic book. Oh, this is nice. So it's fine when you want to display like that, but it seems to me that if you want the ultimate version, you're going to have to go for the one fifth. Yeah, that is sick. It is sick. Yeah, and without the comic book, it's a quarter scale. And the thing is this, this really kind of, when I thought about it, I was thinking, but why is it that? And then really it came to my mind that it really makes sense that they didn't win for it. It makes sense in the sense that initially I can say that the plan was do it as a one fifth. Kind of go alongside every other one fifth uh, dioramas that they normally do with marble. But I think because of people were clamoring, people were asking, says we want the quarter scale. We want a quarter scale. Then they kind of gave in and they maybe were in talks with the factory and they say, hey, how can we do it as a quarter scale? Because I don't think this is the the pictures that we're seeing here and not the pictures of the quarter scale. We're seeing pictures of the one fifth scale that, you know, this actually here is not even a picture. This is actually this was digitally rendered. This is a digital rendering or this is a copy. This is a Photoshop photo. This is not the actual pieces together. So in my opinion, I think that they decided to sell the quarter scale that way but they're in talks with the factory and the factory say well if we add the comic it's going to add a lot more money it's going to be more expensive and they are afraid to sell it for like for the actual price with the comic book because that's more weight that's more parts to it and it's making it more expensive so they decide to say we're going to sell it simpler this way but i know it's not the plan because another thing that kind of gives it away is the fact that you can still see the smoke effect that is coming from the comic book that i totally get it if you're gonna do that effect because it, it's designed for the comic book they remove the comic book then of course they still it still remains there but it was not the purpose of it the fact that it's on the quarter scale it tells me that it was a last minute decision and because that is an effect that is part of the comic book so in the end i think it's just they just gave in because they saw the potential to sell a lot more with quarter scale too so they give it a second choice and they actually experimented with the idea of having like multiple choices something that i i said many many times before to head has been doing to head has been doing the quarter scale one six scale stuff and they seem to be fine so i don't know why it's kind of being afraid to do it i think with this they actually experimenting and actually trying the waters to see kind of diving into it a little bit and says maybe this is a good way to do it i think there's a lot of potential now now, the, the reason why they haven't added the comic book, in my opinion, of course, this is my opinion, I think, is because the, it was very, uh, the cost of producing it with the comic book was, a, you know, exorbitant. It was probably around $1,500 or something. And the, the the reason why I say it is because um, some, some time ago, I spoke with uh, some people in the industry. I, I would say Eric Sosa. I was talking to Eric Sosa. And, um, and I remember he was saying, um, he told me that in reality, all these factories, because you have to keep in mind, SciShow doesn't have any factories. SciShow works with factories in China. Some of these factories have been doing work for SciShow for many years. So it's a client of SciShow. SciShow is a company that produces things in-house. and But they send all these prototypes to China for them to, the factories in China, for them to finalize the product. So at the end of the day, everything is cost prohibited in the sense some things are cost prohibited. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. But, uh, and sometimes I, I was talking to Eric and Eric was saying that, um, there's no big difference between one six scale and one fifth scale or one four scale in the end, they technically, they pay the same price for almost every scale nowadays with the factories, because factories is not considering scales 
for production. They consider the the weight, the pack. They consider actually the how wide things are, and of course, a lot of statues can be wide or whatever. They they technically the difference is so minimal when you're producing statues in the factories or the cost. Technically, you go to the factory. It says how much it would be to produce a thousand pieces of this particular statue at a one six scale. It's almost the same price as paying a quarter scale, because they you know. At the other day, the companies would say, well, they're smaller, so that means that they require more detail. We got to do more fine work, more fine tuning paint. So ultimately, and there's a lot of things, a lot of factors that go with it. So technically, you're paying the same price for one six or one quarter scale. So there's no big difference. The point is that if you're going to add certain aspects of a couple of things, the factory might say, well, now, because you have to overscale this, this is going to cost you a little more. So in my opinion, it's becoming cost prohibited. So if they want to really be ahead of the time and make more money, make some profit out of it with the size should decide to say, well, we're going to make it without this. We're going to sell it that way because if we sell it like that, it's going to cost a lot more for production for us. And it's not doable. It's we're technically we're losing more money by doing so. And companies don't want to lose money. These companies are not here to lose money. They're here to make money. If they're losing money, they're not doing good business. That's the way it is. This is not like XO6 that I spoke earlier that the guy or the company is owned by one guy that actually is a big fan and wants to do things like that. This is a corporation, you know, and the corporations is all about the bottom line. So in the end, I think they simply decided not to do it because it was cost prohibited. It was too much for them to invest. And they, you know, the factory says, this is how much it's going to cost you now. And last minute decision, they have to release this because, you know, they have to. And this is the moment to sell it. So they decide, oh, we're going to do it that way. I think it's a dumb decision in some way. I'm not going to say that it's not because it feels that the quarter scale. Yes, it's quarter scale. It looks great. But in some way, it feels like the inferior version. And then most of the time is the one, the smaller version, which is the inferior version, like you saw with XM Studios. XM Studios, when it does quarter scale, is the one that comes with all the extras. And when they do the one six scale of the smaller version of that quarter scale, it's more limited, you know, because it's a different market. So I feel that they didn't want to sell the quarter scale at $1,500 or something like that, something more expensive, because they know that customers are going to complain. The customers complain regardless, but they felt, in my opinion, that if they sell it with the comic book, it's more expensive to produce. They cannot sell it at a certain level because people already have in their mind the price they want to pay for SciShow stuff. And they don't want to go overboard that because then you have a lot of people complaining and that is not good advertisement for the product because they say it's too expensive. You know, because keep in mind, SciShow is a company that sells products expensive, but people complain a lot about the price of SciShow. And the reality is that SciShow still has a competitive price in comparison to other companies. As we saw with the Prime 1 Studio, we just look at the one-third scale Batman versus Joker. That is $2,500, $2,600 for the one-third. SciShow selling you that Batman versus Joker for less than a th what, around $1,000 is still doable for a lot of people. It's still a lot of collectors, they feel like, okay, this is something that I can buy. Now, if you try to sell that for $1,800 as other companies are selling their products, then people are simply going to be fed up with such gonna it's going to be a back mess it's a, such a backlash that people do and such has a lot of pull with so many people there's so much talks people are going to be talking about it and i think such doesn't cannot afford that so they decide to go maybe to sell what people wanted with a little less just to kind of keep the price down and also to keep the you know the price not only the production but also to keep their margins of profit at the same level and not lose much money on it to make some money keep everybody happy the investors but also the 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 consumers you know that's just the bottom line people don't want to pay more money for things at the same time and i'm probably going kind of well you know i'm going kind of overboard with this one at the same time you know it, it's kind of like a downer because i it would be nice to have if you're going for the quarter scale why not have the comic book there you know i think Saishu could have just simply dodged to take the bullet and simply maybe make, make less money by doing so. And they simply say, we're going to offer you this version. And I think they will have sold a lot more because at the end of the day, it's not about just the number of uh, uh, the pieces you produce. It's about how many products you sell. And I think the happier the consumer consumers are, no matter that you make less profit in the end, if you sell more pieces, then you're still making the same amount of money. So, But I don't know. Some companies, they don't think that way. And it's a lot of factors that come into play. I think with the comic book, this would have been an easy sale or a quarter scale statue. It will be like people buying it left and right. And maybe the one favor will not be as important 
Uh, but right now, I've seen even on the comments on social media that people are saying that they're going for the one-fifth because it's the one that has the comic book. Uh, look at this this angle here. Nice pose. That Colossus is a killer, man. It looks great. I love the Colossus here. Very nice piece. Very clean depiction. It looks good. Like Even without the comic book. I'm not saying that. Even without the comic book, it looks great. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Man, uh, it's an impressive piece for sure. That's a quite a scale. Def it's not, no, no, don't, don't get me wrong. This is going to sell no matter what. It's going to sell and it's going to sell really, really well. Nice paint job on the base. Here you can see the comparison between scales, between the quarter scale and the one fifth scale. Definitely that comic book looks great, but also the quarter scale, don't get me wrong. That of the quarter scale also without the comic book looks great. But yeah, it would be nice to have that comic book in the background. That would be, you know, that would be like definitely icing on the cake. That would make it because right now, if you want the one with everything, the ultimate version, you got to go for the smaller version. And, you know, many Sideshow fans are just quarter scale fans. So it's like to them it's like, OK, now I'm without. I'm going to have to kind of get stuck with the one that has less pieces to showcase. And in some ways, I feel that in this situation, it might be that the one that holds more value in the end, the one that is more valuable, is definitely going to be the one-fifth, the one that is going to, and the aftermarket is going to do better because it has the complete package. All right, let me read some of the comments here because I've been talking a lot about this one. I've been going in circle with it. Um, let's see. This is well done. I, I think so. I think the piece as a whole... Uh, it's really nicely done. There's no denying on that. And there's a choice that is hard to make. Because in one way, a lot of collectors are quarter scale collectors. I show collectors are quarter scale. So they're going to go for the quarter scale because that's what they feel comfortable with. And But at the same time, they're going to feel cheated because the one fifth scale doesn't ha has an extra part that the quarter scale doesn't have. I think in the end, it was all about the price point. Um the manufacturing costs that really got in the way. Uh, how adding an extra comic book was becoming too expensive. Um, that, I think that is the approach there. I might be wrong. I might be another factor that I'm not considering here. It might be a, a, even a license factor. But um, the, the, in this case, Marvel doesn't want to. They, they actually didn't approve it that way. Marvel does that too. Marvel is very weird. But um, I think there's potential here. Um, at the end of the day, even I will tell you this, it can even change. Uh, Sideshow has been known for kind of going back and not, they didn't do it before, but they're doing it now a, a couple of times where they actually adding some features that they were never present in some other things like adding light of features, changing some things here, which is amazing that they've been doing that lately. I think they've been motivated more since XM Studios has been doing it. Uh, many companies have been doing it, so I feel that they feel that they 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 want to stay competitive. They want they add some things that they before they did it. So they you never know. My side should come around and say, hey, let's add the comic book, and now they look like heroes. People, oh, now we're happy with Sideshow because at the end of the day, sometimes it's just the way they do it. Maybe some talks there. Maybe they do it. Maybe I don't know. You never know. But I think regardless whether. The comic book is there or not i think it's a fantastic depiction of colossus and wolverine and to be honest with you at first i wasn't a fan of the comic book in the background but um and i like it cleaner so many people might prefer the cleaner look it looks better on their display uh because with the comic book it, it looks more like a standalone piece which a lot of people are going to have but without the comic book you might be able to still display this with your quarter scale collection which a lot of collectors out there have so we'll see. Definitely, you're going to see in the quarter scale side, many people probably got You're going to start seeing a lot of uh, Colossus, even Wolverine statues being sold on eBay. You're going to see that uh, being people selling theirs so they can grab this one. You know, why not? If you can, this is, I think, a much better version. I do like the, the more classic depiction here. All right. So this is what Sideshow has done today. Definitely Sideshow killing it. Um, Definitely. It's a beautiful piece, a beautiful depiction, no doubt. All right, my friends. So let's move to the next company, uh, which is PCS. Really coming to the to the end of this video, which it's been a really long video, but man, it's been it's been fun. Thank you for being here with me. We're going to look at the pre-orders. I'm coming here because uh, you can actually get this as as well. 
waiting for this to load. All right, so we doing uh, the newest items. Hopefully it fixes it. Seems like it's not doing it. That is the strangest thing here. Let me go here and show you this. Well, it's not showing here, which is strange. Gotta be honest. Oh, I know where we could go. So this one is not showing up there. It says coming soon. That is kind of strange. I don't know if they have an update their own website, which is kind of strange. So I don't know if there's anything different. Maybe it's just a website thing. All right, let's let's take you to SciShow. Let's go there. They might have an extra. I, I don't know if there is something going on with this website because it shouldn't been here. But in any case. Let's not miss a bit with this one. I'm gonna show show you this. This is the part of the 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 uh, the Street Fighter collection that they've been doing the 110. This is Sangeev and Jen. Very nice. Two hundred fifty dollars. Again, this collection has been growing. There's no special edition or different version that I know of. So another thing that I like about how you can split those bases. So those bases are splitable. They're not together. So you can actually move them around. 9.5 inches tall that's the height of sangif uh in this case jen is very small six inches and in height is not that tall uh, i always like the design of jen i still have the soda toys man i still have the soda toys they were producing macaluso uh jerry the owner uh, the original owner of pcs the, the the founder of pcs before he was sold to this new owner to ann adams but uh jerry macaluso of course he did the soda toys i still have those figures i love them and Jin is one of my favorite figures from that line. And I think it looks phenomenal. Look at this. Of course, this is the Udon style that was done. Very cool concept. I think Jane perhaps is my favorite on this. This set. Looks super great. Very nice detail. Nice paint job. But Sangif right next to it. Definitely. He looks massive. Very cool. Very nice job with Sangeev. Again, this collection is growing really nicely. PCS has been doing really amazing work. Showcasing their talent with this. You know, PCS is really diving into a lot of different things. But what they're doing, they're doing, they're doing great. So that is what they have. Now, they have this other... Piece. This is the Marcus for the Underworld Evolution. A one-third scale statue. $1,600. <laughs> Pricey, but man, look at the depiction. I think one thing that PCS has been doing, I think they they taken this from the... Like, it used to be that Hollywood Collectibles, all these companies, they did a lot of the horror stuff. It's PCS is kind of diving into this market with the horror stuff. And uh, I don't know how much fan base is out there for Underworld. But PCS is not afraid to kind of go into the horrors thing, our teams, and actually start going into these characters. Uh, it seems that Ann Adams, the owner of PCS, is a big fan of horror stuff. And, uh, you know, I love Underworld, uh, the, the franchise itself. I think the original film was my fa is my favorite one, maybe the second one. Uh, then, of course, you dive into a lot more, into a lot of different things. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a franchise that I actually appreciate a lot. Um, and it's cool. I think... If I'm not mistaken, there is an exclusive element if you've ordered this through uh, through PCS. But I don't see it here. Of course, it's not. They don't sell the exclusives at um, at uh, in this case at SciShow. But let's see PCS premium collectibles on Facebook. Maybe we can see some information about this here I'm not sure 
Grim luck. I like the grim luck. I still need to grab that for my uh, collection that they have with them. So I'm not sure here because you can see Jen. Okay. So this is the Marcus. All right, there. I'm not sure there's an issue with the page. All right, there. It's right there. Look at look at this one. So yeah, if you go to SciShow, good thing we went there. And size, of course, this is the regular version. $1,500, almost $1,600. If you come here, actually, it pays you to this. It's better to order through uh, PCS because you get a better deal. Uh, you get the early pre-order gift where you get the 10% discount, uh, additional 70%, $70 off back on PCS. No, it, it, here, the current price reflects a 10% off. That's the early product window discount that you get if you order it within the time frame. I don't know how many days is within a month, I think. And then you get $70 more as a 5% back in loyalty points, which you can use in the future for other products. Something that they've been doing a lot is great. It's, divide, it's 200 pieces for the exclusive side. If you go for the original uh oh and there's not the original the regular version they don't have an edition size yet that has been disclosed here you can see you get that extra item here let's see we can see some of the details here what is the extra item what it's for the statue elevated uh they awaken the best within uh, within and add the underworld evolution marcus one third platinum exclusive to your collection okay the pcs platinum exclusive also includes a proximity accessory representing the the tomb entrance the marcus seeks out to free his brother in the film pcs platinum exclusives also include a st statue cleaning kit metal certificate of authenticity and a chance to win a real one ounce platinum pcs collector's coin as well as a ruby ticket worth 200 dollars in pcs loyalty points so man you have to go for this one you know if you want to buy this one they don't do it through sasha come here because you get all these loyalty things, those, uh, you know, like this proximity piece to go alongside it. That is great. Here is another piece that they're doing. Oh, wow. They're doing that is coming for Underworld Evolution. So they continue to grow this collection. Very nice. Very nice piece. And again, PCS, ordering through PCS is the way to get this extra proximity piece that makes it exclusive you also get a lot of perks discounts and bonuses things that only you're going to get through here and i think pcs has been promoting a lot of you know direct buy direct sell and i think that is the way to go many companies they 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 rather deal with the cut you know not deal with the customers and have somebody else to do it for them as sideshow but in my opinion um you know you have more control on the on what you're selling who you selling to and yeah it comes with headaches you have to be prepared for it because you got to deal with a lot of customer service but um you know it's part of the the process of growing the companies to expanding iron studios for example has their own you know division also here now in the united states now where they deal directly with the customers which is great so a lot of companies it's a sign of growth i think companies that are doing that i wish prime one studio also had their own department or their own office their own division here in the united states to deal directly with them that would be great but um you know, their limitations sometimes has to do with licenses and stuff. So that is great. This is what PCS is doing. I think it's really, really good. This line is very, very tempting. Which which one you're talking about, squad? You're talking about the Street Fighter one? Let me drink some water. Oh, oh, my. All right. Finally, coming to the end of the, the video, the last company that we need to cover. Man, this has been a long night. This has been the longest. We're going to go to Queen Studios. Queen Studios right here. Uh, day release. Of course, Apollo Treaties is really great from the NR studio. We talked about it already. This, the whole one third scale statue. Of course, I see people already whining or complaining about, it, about the price. And I, I knew that it would be. It's within the price range of what they do, all the pieces they do. This is a huge monster. This is a huge guy made out of silicone. And it wasn't supposed to be. 
Um, this is a, the, the introduction the whole one third collective statue. This break taken masterpiece crafted by the Queen Studios uh, team is inspired by the iconic Battle of New York uh, scene from Marvel Avengers 2012. It's standing tall at 92, 92 centimeters. This limited edition statue is created using state of the art technology to capture the whole with incredible realism. The character's self skin is recreated using medical grade silicone. While his eyes and hand rooted hair add the finishing touches uh, to the hyper real statue. Even has some like body hair. Like I was looking at some of the pictures. We're going to look at the moment, which is amazing. Special features. Take your Marvel collection to the next level with this dynamic articulating statue. This articulating statue. So you can actually move parts because of the silicone. This limited edition Hulk statue includes an articulated arm and head for more display options. So you can move the head. You can move the arm. That is awesome. The base feature and nameplate bearing the, the base fe features. Not the best feature. The base features a nameplate bearing the Hulk inscription and the Avengers logo. The simplicity of the base exudes a clean and majestic aura, complementing the formidable presence of this incredible statue. Here you can see the height is 92 centimeters, which is almost a meter tall. It's pretty tall. The width is 60 centimeters. Depth is 45 centimeters. And here you can see the things you can do. Articulated head, articulated arm, fabric, fabric pants, platinum silicone skin. And this is, of course, if you buy directly from Queen Studios, it's the only available to mainland China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, South Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand. So it's definitely just for the market in, I would say, China and Southeast Asia, and technically Asia too, because it also includes some of the northern, the part of Asia with South Korea. So the only place that is not being, pro it's not, it has that, it would be Japan. And uh, also, I don't see the Philippines. So there's some countries that they don't have that in Asia. But in any case, you want this piece, of course, you need to come to Spec Fiction. And here in Spec Fiction, that's where you can get it in the United States. Here, like you can see that price. Maybe that price is high. But to be honest with you, it doesn't surprise me at all. Based on the other things that they have done in the past with the bus and stuff like that, with you know, we had see with Infinity Studio, it's 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 a price that it's there. You know, I don't know why some people are even trying to make videos on social media saying that, you know, the price is not a you know, like they thinking or saying that it's killing the mark the market or killing the 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 you know, it, it's, I don't know. People they like just to make I think videos for views. I I don't know, but the point is. It's not killing the market. I don't think so. It's not. It's just a reflection of the market. This is not a price that is out of the ordinary for what Queen Studio has been doing with this. With this, if J and D Studio has been selling statues that are smaller uh, with silicone for that amount, uh, Queen Studio is selling you this big guy for that amount. Is it's not bad. It's within the norm of what they sell. And the reason why they sell is because they know they can. Because primarily there's a lot of dip pockets in Asia. A lot of people there. Oh, the Squad Captain of the Underworld? Yeah, it's a very nice... Yeah, so far, I love the, the series. So they, they, the PCS did a fantastic job on that one. But here, looking at the, the Hulk, man, it just great. Nice depiction. Huge piece. It's going to really go alongside so well. Man, I, I just want to be able to touch this piece to feel how you feel the silicone. I want to feel like, is, is it that like that great to the touch? Man, it looks great. Even the hair, look at the hair, his eyebrows. All of that is just something that they, they have to do. Look at this. Even like you can see the face. Even he has hair. Look at the hair in his chest. You can even see the hair there. Wow. The eyes. The eyebrows, man. That is meticulous work for sure. And all the different portraits. And being able to kind of move the arm. I I think that I don't know sure how much is moving there. Kind of looks the same. But it seems like you can position in some way the arm. You can position the fingers in some way. Look at that. There's even hair right there in his... Uh, look at that. There's hair right there in his arms. Look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> so when people are like, oh man, this is so expensive. This is not polystone. This is like silicone that it looks so realistic. 
even have a heart, you know, arm in his hairs. That is just very unique. It's not for everyone. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, okay. You can see the fingers moving in the hands. It doesn't have to be. It's such a unique piece. I, I'm definitely it's one of those things that you felt like, oh my god, this is this hub is getting into places that is, is weird. Of course, you know how the future is going to be with silicone. I don't know. You know, I think that there's a lot of bright future with these companies. They're pushing the envelope, doing that stuff that actually is pushing other companies to be more competitive. You can see this video. Look at this video from Quincy's right there. Look at that. That is such a gorgeous piece. Look at that. Even that. Wow. This is we're, we're another level now. And I even saw people trying to say that this is an articulated uh, doll. You know, like, come on, man. Like some people, they just don't know what to say. They just don't want to say because they, they, they feel left out. And I'm sorry, but you know, not everything is made for you. Like, that's something that I would say to someone, not every piece that it's produced by this company is made for this companies are not, they don't care about the YouTubers. Okay. They don't, they're not making stuff for YouTubers. They're making stuff for collectors. You know, they're making stuff for people who had the means, the ability and the money and the deep pockets for it. And if they sell it, it's because they know they can because there is a market for it and it's proven, you know, this company is not selling just for whatever. Quinsters has been selling products at this price point. When you look at Quinsters, look at this one, look at this one. So people, they just talk about the next thing because it's the new thing to talk about. But when you look at some of the stuff that Quinsters has been selling, then you know, the prices are up there. So I don't know why it is that people feel like, okay, you know, that this, or we are in something in new ground or new terrain. Look at all these pieces here. They're all on the wait list, man. Everything that they have done so far is on the wait list. Look at that. Everything. Everything is on the wait list. So, so people act like, okay, this is like new. Like, I'm sorry, but look at this company is selling and it's selling well. It's selling because people are buying. And as long as they, people are buying, let's see. They're going to keep selling. And they can't look at these products. They have some stuff on Predator, but almost everything they have done that's you know, pretty much has been sold out. All the big stuff sold out. Look at even this Hulk. It looks amazing. All of this stuff that they're doing is amazing. You know, I, I you know, we, we got to keep things in perspective like this. For example, there's a pre-order for the tour life size boss, almost $4,000. That is another one. Yeah. I think the company's. Some of this stuff is really pushing the envelope, but you have to keep in mind that everything is going up, but these companies are selling and they're selling well. So when people come and say that this is not, you know, they, they just, they're just doing clickbait. You know, a lot of people that just do clickbait on so here on YouTube and you know, I'm sorry if I, sometimes I do it, you know, I, I'm not here to, you know, I love to have views, but at the same time, I'm not going to be trying to create drama, cause drama, drama. I'm not here to kind of like, Oh, make, try to create some type of, uh, discussion, you know, trying to kind of steer the pot because that is not the point. You know, the reality is that the companies, these companies they have a market, they're selling a product. And as long as they're selling, they keep selling and pushing that they're not selling for the masses. You know, they're selling for a particular audience that is willing to pay the price. And there is a market when we look at cars, for example, like Lamborghinis, uh, Ferraris, those are expensive and people say, but you know, they're not making Ferraris for everyone, you know, like, no, they're not because that is not their market. Ferrari doesn't care about, you know, the market that needs a Honda or a Toyota. They don't care for the Ford market. They don't care for the, the, the American market. They don't care for the people that they want. They didn't even care about the BMW market. You know, we have to keep it respect. There's cars for all different markets. They care about people who can afford to pay a million dollars for a car. That is what they produce and that is what they target. And as long as they stay on track on that target, you know, they are successful. Ferrari is successful, but you know, McLaren is successful, you know, like Jawa is successful. All these companies are within the high end stuff. They're successful because they sell to a particular audience. It never goes away. They never lose market. There's people, there's type of, the world is bigger than the United States. 
You know, the collectors in the world are bigger than the United States. It's not all of the. It's not all of us. I we we like to think that we're more important than anybody else, but the reality is that there's a lot of people with deep pockets in Asia. A lot of people in in this company is Asian. You know, there's a lot of people with deep pockets in the Middle East. That for them is just a drop in the pocket. You know, for thousand dollars for us, it's a lot of money. But you know. I'm not trying to de- minimize the the reality of things are getting expensive. Yeah, but and the, at the end of the day, there's companies to companies. SciShare is a company that sells for 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 a bigger audience. This is what they do, and they do amazing work. and And that's what they do. That was they concentrate on. Other companies don't, you know, and, and that's fine as long as those companies are producing and they keep in and they. Pro- it's amazing. They push in the envelope, but they are not. They don't care about the average collector they don't care about him because that's not their bread and butter that's not what they make money they are making money on people that are willing to pay top dollar to have the ultimate thing because they have the means for it you know we have to keep things in perspective you know am i a fan of that i wish if i have the money i buy the hulk but i don't i don't lose the sleep over it you know i don't I don't feel that it's the end because I feel a lot of times people say, oh, it's the end. The bubble is going to burst. You know, this is the the end of the the, the market as it is. And now really coming to the end of the video now. Now that we definitely we I I already discussed a couple of things here. Really, really coming to the to the end of the video now. It's, It's so. I think that most of the time with collectors, the idea is that we are so self center. Uh. And sometimes we have this selfish mentality that is all about us. The truth of the matter is that it's not all about us. You know, companies produce for a bigger, for different audiences. There's different audiences for everything. I, here in this video, as you you meant, as I you have seen, have talked about several companies, companies that they have for for different markets. You know, where there is people who love Star Wars, people who love Marvel, people who love the anime stuff, the manga stuff, people who love, you know, what you name it. There's a lot of things people love and there's always a a market for it. And companies go for that market. Some companies, they only fixate themselves on doing one single thing. Like what only works with Lord of the Rings stuff. That's they do other things, but Lord of the Rings, that's the bread and butter. Exo six only Star Trek stuff. That's what they do. And some companies, they concentrate on the anime or the manga. Some companies, they go for the Marvel stuff. Some companies, again, for Star Wars, whatever, you know, companies concentrate on those markets and they cater to that public that they already have, the fan base they already have. And there is for all different pockets. So you want something cheap, definitely a statues are in the cheaper side of things. You go to Gentle Giant now, you go to Diamond Select Toys because they cater to that market. If you want uh, cheaper figures, you definitely three zeros are cheaper figures than hot, you know, hot toys. And, and so on and so on and so on. But those companies, all the companies are doing something different, you know, for that market. The same happens with the high end stuff. Prime One Studio concentrates on one market, uh, on, on one packet of the market. The same with Quinn Studios. And they stick with that. And that's okay. Because the truth of the matter is that you cannot be a master of everything. And the truth of the matter is that you cannot be a company that sells to everyone. Because when you start doing that, then you start losing sight of who you are as a company. And also you start kind of uh, really risking your quality you know you are actually diving into cheaper markets cheaper products and then you lose the value what you have with your name and some of these companies they really put so much emphasis on their value prime one studio does queen studio does all these companies they put value on their name and uh, because people feel like oh i'm have a prime one studio in my collection or i have this piece in my collection queen studio so there is a lot of name if you start selling a lot of cheaper stuff you're losing the risk of people not seeing you as important anymore as a company for the masses. And unfortunately, whether we like it or not, that is a big aspect of the collectibles world. It's always been about status. You know, people love status. So they want the things that are more collectible. They, it's all about, you know, having the most rare thing, the most expensive thing, the most valuable thing. And people are willing to go that extra mile just for the valuable items. You know, it depends on what you see in the collectibles market. Uh, yes, there's a side that cares about looks and there's a, a side that cares about having beautiful things to display, but there's, th- th- let's, n- let's not make a mistake here. Let's not confuse one thing with the other. The market in its foundation, the basis of this market has always been the collector more than people that only want to display things. People that want to display things come and go. 
they are the hobbyists that they just do this because they're building something. Once they get tired of it, they move on to the next hobby. They're hobbyists. They just kind of change from hobby to hobby. But at the end of the, the end of the day, the people who are always going to be here are the ones who are collecting the ones that want the rare items, the ones that want the, the unique things. They are the ones that are willing to pay the price for those things. And that is the foundation of this market. Even if this bulb, the bubble bursts at some point, even if people go away by masses, by droves, they leave this hobby. There's still going to be a market of people that have always been through the ages that always want to have the rare items. And those are the people who at the end of the day will keep this hobby going. And it's just the way it is. It happens in every other hobby. It happens on every market. All right, my friends, this is the end of the video. I already kind of spoke my mind. I already preached to the masses, to the only for the couple viewers that I have, but that's fine. You know, just, you know, there's no reason to lose sleep over it. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice piece. No doubt it's beautiful, but it's not the sign of the end of the world. It's not the sign of the end of the world will be when the companies go silent and they're not selling anything and they're not actually putting pre-orders. Then you have to worry about things because then you feel, okay, the companies are not doing anything. And there's so many delays and there's actually they go side radio silent for a while then you know something is not right something is happening that is actually as that is the real sign that there's something that is troubling but right now no like every week is like come on man there's like tons of re things products to be there on pre-order that is the sign that the market is healthy at least that the companies are willing to go the extra mile to sell products you know, oh, thank you, squad. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Edgy, uh, Eddie. Thank you all. You know, at the end of the day, you know, when people say that the market is dying, I'm sorry, but like this video went for three and a half hours so far. And I talk about a lot of products. So those products are designed that the market is not dying. If companies are investing money to sell products, then something is something is not something is right. At least companies are doing something right. When people are saying that it's just for their own perspective maybe you know yeah the economy is bad but just because the economy is bad or the economy i wouldn't say bad the economy is different in all parts of the world it depends on where where you stand economically it doesn't mean that uh everyone is in the same boat with you you know it's just it's just the way it is you know like we all have challenges things seem to be more expensive but some people are not affected by it you know some people are um I wish I was one of them that is not affected by the, the, the turmoil of finances, but you know, we all are in the same boat in some way, but some people are willing to go and they will pay the money for it. That's how it is. All right, my friends. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. There was a great night. I do like the opportunity to talk to you, all of you very much. Thank you very much. Late night, late night, always here. Thank you very much. My friend, uh, my friend, uh, but Chinosin, thank you very much. Uh, we have Batman. Thank you. William Lee. Thank you very much. Eddie uh, squad captain. Thank you very much. Um, you know, it, it's just a, it, amazing. I think the market is, like you said right there, like the, the market is just a sign that, you know, just because some things are not happening so well here in the United States doesn't mean that things are not happening in Asia. You know, markets are, are emerging with a lot of people with a lot of deep pockets and they're willing to buy the products. They're the one to, it's all about status in the end. Uh, Middle East, amazing what people can buy over there. Like they, you know, they, it's amazing when I see the documentaries of like people, like everywhere, everybody has a Lambo, you know, in the Middle East, in Kuwait or places like that, or uh, Saudi Arabia. And they're like everywhere, like just left on the road. You know, like people, they just buy cars like there's nothing. And like, oh my God, it's like, I wish I was in the same boat. You know? All right, everyone, have a great weekend. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for being here with me. I, I hope the best the rest of the weekend, uh, the rest of the night, uh, and also Sunday. Thank you very much. Have a great week. I'll talk to you uh, next week. Hopefully, I can produce some videos. If not, we'll, we'll have a live video once again. I'm not sure if it's going to be Friday. It's going to be Good Friday next weekend. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do something very Good Friday haven't decided yet uh but definitely we're gonna have a live stream again next week sometime i don't know if it's gonna be again on saturday it could happen on thursday night i'm not sure but i will let you know when the time comes so have a good night everyone god bless you